Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 489, featuring a look at a game called Encased by Dark Crystal Games, who I believe is a Bulgarian developer. Now, this is a really interesting game if you are a fan of the classic fallouts and wastelands and you like a, a good writing, good prose, I uh, think something like Torment, Tides of Numenera. Uh, it's, got a, it's a bit text heavy, a bit narrative heavy. Uh, that's a good thing for, I know a lot of you enjoy that. Uh, but even if you don't like that stuff and you just like good turn-based combat, I think you'll still find much to enjoy about this game. Now the storyline, as you'll see uh, momentarily, is kind of based on a classic uh, science fiction mini novel called Roadside Picnic, which was also, by the way, an influence of some of those other games I mentioned, as well as, I think, uh, Stephen King's Under the Dome uh, storyline. <laughs> You might have seen the show. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of great stuff here, so without further ado, here is Encased. So here we go. We're getting ready to dive into this little game called Encased. Uh, this is a game that came out back in 2021. It's from a, I believe, a Bulgarian developer. I've been trying to get a little more information about where these guys are from. Seem like nice guys. Uh, you know, I like to get them on to, uh, to Matt Chat maybe and talk about this. We'll see how... Today goes, but uh, you can see they live in a place called Varna. So this might be the first game I've covered from a developer based based in uh, Varna. Maybe Bulgaria, I don't know how to see. But uh, anyway, I thought that was interesting. It's always cool to see what people from other parts of the world are up to. Uh, also, this is uh, based on one of my favorite novels, or short novels, I guess you could call it, Roadside Picnic. I read this. It's been several years now, so I probably couldn't give you all the details on it, but I just thought it was really cool. As I recall, it's based on this guy that goes into this area, and there's all this alien technology, and he's, like, salvaging stuff. <laughs> he doesn't quite know what it does. <laughs> you know, I don't want to spoil the story for you. That's about what I remember from it, uh, just being really cool and at a conceptual you know, level if you're into sci science fiction. It's kind of a classic. Let's see if the author... What's the author? Arkady and Boris, I guess there's two authors, Arkady and Boris Strugansky, written in 71. And it's a Soviet Russian, uh, Soviet Russian authors. <laughs> so good, kind of unusual. I haven't read a whole lot of science fiction from, you know, this would have been, of course, the Soviet, actual Soviet Union uh, of the 70s. But anyway, it's supposedly based on that. Uh, let's see if we can glean anything else before we dive in. Tactical sci-fi RPG, that's awesome, set in an alternative 1970s, where an enormous and inexplicable artifact, the dome, is discovered in a remote desert. Fight enemies, explore the anomalous wasteland, level up your character, join one of the forces in the ruined world. So kind of some vibes of wasteland and fallout and uh, atom, atom, if you remember that, A-T-O-M, not too long ago. Kind of striking a, a vein similar to that, I think. So anyway, it's a great uh, great genre, underexplored. I like this angle on the roadside picnic. Is there anything else that we really want to know about this before we dive in? You know, I don't think so. I got it downloaded and installed, so uh, let's boot her up and see what it's all about. All right, here we go with Encased, a sci-fi post-apocalyptic RPG. Oh, yes. I can tell it's sci-fi because the music is so... How do you describe that? I'm kind of mass effect -y, I suppose. Is that a... I guess that's the adjective we're going to go with here. Uh, definitely setting a futuristic vibe. Some people just skip right past these title sequences, title screens. But I always like to stop and look and try to get a sense of... And what kind of vibe is the developer trying to set? Is that realized? And not just the artwork, but the interface, the music, the, you know, the whole package. How does it all come together? And just looking at this screen here, you know, I definitely pick it up on those sci-fi themes. Kind of, again, reminds me of something like Mass Effect, maybe Portal, with a little bit of a Brotherhood of Steel Fallout kind of vibe here on the, on the side. So it's very intriguing. 
you know, just already it's kind of like, what, what's going on with this big ball? What are these guys working on? Even getting a little, maybe even a little bit of XCOM flavor. So yes, I am going to click on new game because I want to see what this is all about. Uh, now this is a, a four-tier difficulty system. I've gone in, I've looked at the more details on this, and it's it's really kind of tough. I'm not sure I like how they set these up. You know, it's kind of hard mode, medium, and difficult, but if you look at the options here, like under the journey one, it says you get rate of hunger, thirst, and fatigue, 50%, and you can carry more weight, uh, which sounds great. You know, I would like to do that, but then again, some of these sound like they're a little bit too hand-holdy, a little bit too much of a handicap, maybe. Accuracy of enemy attacks, 20%. Enemies never dodge, so it's almost like a little bit too wimpy. <laughs> so I'm kind of torn. I'm not really sure which way to go here. Uh, I guess since it's my first time, I might just go with the medium difficulty. 1971. We woke up in a different world, yes, where the did. Cold War ended along with the Vietnam carnage. All because of the dome. Uh, the doom. The Under dome. the doom. A territory full of anomalous artifacts, phenomena, and organisms. See, that's the we still don't know what it part. is. An alien city? Some kind of a testing ground or storage? Whatever it is, no living thing trapped under the dome can escape it. Yet even this did not so stop. Definitely got it under the dome. The major powers created the Cronus Mega Corporation to develop and explore the dome. You know what I'm talking about, right? Stephen King's its secrets show? Became a I guess it's based on business. the novel. The Spire Station was built on top Pretty of good. the dome to export the artifacts and import supplies and personnel. The city of Crystal Sands grew at the foot of the dome, eventually becoming a major transportation hub. All this required thousands of employees, and there was no shortage of candidates. Romantics, pragmatists, and adventurers of all trades swarmed recruiting centers around the globe seeking jobs at Cronus. <laughs> you yeah, show up were in a spandex suit. In 1976, your application was approved, and you went under the dome towards the future. Under Whether the a dome good one or a bad one. Under only the dome. time will tell. So that's a pretty cool setup for a game, I think. A little bit of a mashup. You know, again, it's been too long since I've read the Roadside Picnic. You know, I believe, uh, didn't Fargo say that he was inspired by that too? I wanted to say I remember that from somewhere. Maybe it was Tim Kaine. It's good. It seems to be a good short story or short novel to read if you're looking for inspiration. Okay, let's see. Choose a character. Character story. Based on a military base, fought as a mercenary in Central Africa, an unpleasant, pathologically unlucky woman, accustomed to charging forward in any situation, an avid fan of machine guns and knives. So do we get to... I guess we're just choosing a character. We don't actually get to go in here and... Oh yeah, I guess we can uh, edit character. But it's... Oh, we could create a character from scratch, too. I'm going to go ahead and check that out. Welcome to the character creation screen, where you create a protagonist to plunge into adventure room. To begin, choose the name for your character, select the wing in which they work, their portrait, and then adjust their physical appearance. Okay. Abel Gula. How about... Man, Burton! Yeah, not ready for me, are you? Age, 39, of course. Gender, male. Yes, very, very male. Is there an option for very male? <laughs> oh, I changed my... <laughs> uh, let's see, body type. Wait. Gender... What am I missing here? Body type. Oh, so one of them is the portrait. One of them is the model over there. Okay. Uh... Head type. You know, I never understood why do they even need these portraits here? Why don't they just do a little screenshot or something of the actual model so you don't have to try to match up a portrait with it? You know, a lot of games do. I never understood this 
why they need a different kind of thing. Caucasian hair. <laughs> now this must be futuristic hair. I guess. We've got to mold it on. Features. Oh. Yeah. Close enough. How do I change the hair colors? Oh, there we go. 15. Pretty. What do you think? That. That. That's, you know, again, close enough. Is there a way to get this hair longer? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you know, this is what my hair looks like if I, if I, before it gets long enough to fall, it actually looks like this. You know, some people tell me I should just leave it like that. I thought that would look cooler. Uh, I guess this is okay. I don't really think I look like this. We're just gonna go with it. I won't spend too long on this. Okay, black wing. What's the deal with these wings? No. Oh. Now that you ask, Matt, he will tell you. Uh, Cronus is divided into wings, just like buffalo hot wings. These five departments are engaged in different activities. Choosing a wing affects the background of your character, starting attribute values, initial equipment, and answer options in dialogue. Okay. This is kind of the kind of thing here you just have to play the game a couple times until you really knew what was going to be a good choice. Let's see, black wing. Maybe just go by how the starting equipment looks. Well, that's very Half-Life. What's the name of that guy? Gordon, I think? Kind of like, or it looks maybe like the X-Wing fighter guys. <laughs> well, every person deserves a second chance, especially those willing to make amends for their crimes by working for the betterment of humanity. Orange Wing was created especially for such people. Its employees are everywhere, providing every kind of domestic service. Ooh, domestic service. Cleaning and delivery to manufacturing. There's always work on the dome. Black Wing is military. Employees of Black Wing protect humanity from the myriad hazards of the dome. Best officers from the most highly trained armies. That sounds okay. I think I like that. I don't know how much combat we're going to be de dealing with, but I'm guessing it might be a lot. Oh, piloting is a thing. So we got vehicles in this game. That's cool. Okay, so muscle, physical strength, effects, hit points, encumbrance, close quarters damage, heavy weapons, hand-to-hand -hand melee, and tech skills. It's a heavy mortar, grenade launcher, heavy machine gun. Okay, so kicking, punching, clubs. It's like rifles. Is there no rifle? Attribute distribution. Each character in the game has a set of attributes. Basic physical and mental characteristics. The higher the value, the greater the advantage. Uh, attributes are distributed automatically. You can redistribute them. Okay, so I guess it does this automatic. So it's just a question. Do I want to fuss with this or just go? Oh, regeneration. So maybe our character automatically regenerates. You know, this is, uh, looks like a pretty sophisticated system. I don't know, do they just make all this up or is this based on something? It's like it's an action point system. A lot of people like those action point systems. Do. Critical hit chance. Initiative. You know what that means. <laughs> Turn based, baby! <laughs> okay, I don't know. What is a light weapon? Pistol, shotgun. Oh, okay. Okay, heavy weapon. Where is just like a regular rifle? You know what I mean? Just a. Is that considered heavy? Or light? High tech? No. Hand to hand is just okay. 
I don't want to be walking around with a club. Contraception. No contraptions. A bear trap. Uh, piloting. You know, I can't believe there's... It's kind of a thing, you know, you would anticipate there should be one for, uh... I guess medium weapons? Is there some reason I'm not seeing that option? I don't know, let's just go forth. You know, grenade. We'll get the job done, I suppose. Tagged skills. Uh, in case characters have a variety of skills that reflect their prowess in certain specific areas, be it handling those weapons. We recommend choosing two apply to one combat skills, but you may select three skills as your tag skills. This is basically like the, uh, I don't know what they call it, a 5e proficiency bonus. Proficient in certain skills. I wish we could all just use the same vocabulary. Combat. I mean, I get that they don't want to uh, be sued. Okay, tag skills. So what do they say? Two applied and one combat? Medicine, technology, science, criminal. In moral but practical, this skill allows you to take other people's things and penetrate restricted areas. Looks like I've already got some points in that. Influence! I guess that's your rhetorical skill. Survival. It's hard to overestimate the importance of this skill for those wishing to have a long life. Well, that sounds like something good to have. <laughs> Cookery. Oh, so we got cooking. Alright, let's go survival. Uh, let's do criminal. Why not? I would assume that's like lock picking and maybe hacking and stuff. Of course, that could fall under tech. Uh, combat. Light weapon, heavy weapon, high tech weapon. The higher this stat, the more familiar is the pew pew sound of wacky science fiction. That sounds a little bit Bugs Bunny ish or something. I hope it doesn't go zany on me. The rest of the game's kind of exuding a serious vibe. I don't know if they're going to be all cartoony. Melee weapon. You don't have to. You don't run out of bullets for your knife. You know, there's that argument. Uh, psionics. Well, you know, it looks like it's setting me up here for heavy weapons because we already got an 18 score. I'll just go for that. Oh, what is this? I guess we get to pick our abilities now. Okay, I guess. Well, where to go? Where to go? <laughs> Attributes, traits. Oh, there's a lot to this. Wait, wait, what happened? I thought a little thing had popped up. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Oh, is that a glitch? Oh, it is glitched. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna have to redo this. Oh, wait. Is this automatically selected for me? Weird. Very weird. I got a point there. Okay, never mind. Moving on. I thought I had to select these, which is showing me which ones I got. Okay, then we get traits. Which is not to be confused with perks by any means. See, Gun Fanatic, you adore guns and calibers and types. You own a solid collection of arms and spend a lot of time at the shooting range. Alright, so that's pretty obvious what that does. Sally here. Is that like the Amadeus movie? It's a good movie. Uh, you work hard to take by force what is given to others from birth. You even succeed somewhat, but no matter how hard you try, you cannot escape the stigma of mediocrity. 
I think that is must be based on that. I think uh, that movie was based on a play called Salieri. If I recall correctly. These must be some pretty uh, smart guys making this. Okay, so this just gives you some, uh... You know, I guess you get some pluses and... you get minuses? Yeah, it looks like you get pluses and minuses with these. So not really perks. <laughs> Redneck. Woo, baby! You grew up on a farm and years of daily physical labor made you tougher. But digging through the dung day by day, you rarely found time to develop as a person. <laughs> Dark Lord. Well, there's a bunch of these. Prodigy. Prodigy. You graduated from university at the age of 11 and can describe your genius in 20 languages. There are a few things you do not understand on Earth, and as soon as you learned about the dome, you happily decided to go there. You're exceptionally smart. But you know so much that when interacting with the world, you only get half the experience. Oh. Oh, that's, uh... Okay. Giveth and then taketh away. Well... Maybe Gun Fanatic is the way to go. I don't want to go through every one of these. <laughs> Do we have to pick one? Looks like I could just skip. Mechanical damage. Critical hit chance, 20%. No, I'll just go Gun Fanatic. Get ready for your future. Oh, I need to change this portrait, though. No, escape! Change this. There we go. Okay, let's find one that looks somewhat like my model over there. Probably be looking at this picture more than the model. <laughs> hey there, I'm here to help you fix your Amiga. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't really like any of these. I mean, some of them look good. They just don't look like the the guy I'm trying to build over there. Oh, well. Can't have it all. I guess it... <laughs> uh, uh, fine. Can I upload my own picture? Yes, you can. Place your picture into the following folders. Okay, yeah, I'm not really gonna do that, but I could do that. You know what? I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, look at that. I'm much better. Ah. Okay, let's go. Oh, there's more? Come on. We've done all this. Yes, summary. Okay, age 39, male, black wing, gun fanatic. Got some brains, got some muscle! Ugh! Perception. As much as I paid for these glasses, I should have some good perception. Deafness, fortune, psyche, charisma too! <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that explains the demographics of this channel. Got a charisma of two. Not all sexy like. Uh, um. Okay, I think we're good to go. Ooh, resistances. Looks like a pretty detailed system here. I like that. A lot of math. A lot of stuff. A lot of buttons to push. The dome is an international project of unprecedented scale. I would go so far as to say that humanity has come all this way to get exactly where we are. Or slavery, genocide. All these efforts will pay off handsomely. <laughs> what? <laughs> wait, wait a moment. Bad phrasing. Cut that bit, will you? Interview with Cronus's Foundation. <laughs> yeah, have you ever read a book called The, the Man in the Gray Flannel Suit? You know, it's a, I read it recently. It's considered a classic, but it's a, a lot of it is kind of that sort of thing. <clears throat> Writing speeches for powerful people. 
corporate world. I think it's like 1960s. I'm pretty sure it was uh, used as a, the basis for Mad Men. <clears throat> or uh, helped inspire that show. Let's see, conversations. Interacting with different characters is an important part of the game. To start a dialogue, <coughs> click on the character, and if they are set to talk to you, character interface will pop up. From conversations, you can find out by plot information, clues. Choose your lines carefully. Careless words can cause resentment or provoke a fight. Oh, don't we know it. <laughs> oh, don't we know it. Attribute distribution. Oh, got a bunch of stuff popping up here. Get a bunch of stuff. Okay, a bunch of stuff. Where's this conversation they're talking about? You got to talk to all these people? The badge on the orange's chest reads, Quentin Bisley, laborer. Huh. So I'm not actually talking yet at all. He eyes your black uniform and quickly turns away. <laughs> the Chatomatic. <laughs> okay, so I guess there's nothing really there. A guy wearing thick spectacles thrusts out a sweaty hand. Monty James, Silverwing. He glances down at your badge. Ah, it's you. I found your file extremely interesting. And your CV, wonderful. I inspiring, really. This seems like a nice guy. When I had the opportunity to look over the files of my future colleagues, I couldn't resist. I don't want to sound boastful, but silver level clearance has its advantages. Monty winks. Okay. Asking what he saw in your file. Answer not available. Or leave. Eh, leave, I guess. Okay, who else we got here? Elsa. Elsa. A tall woman is watching an ad playing on the monitor, arms crossed. The polished to a shine badge on her black overalls reads Elsa Olafson, Security Service. She glances at you and offers her hand in a business like manner. Greetings. Please take all necessary precautions. By that I mean, don't turn your back on him. Elsa nods at the orange. You know, I'm always kind of intrigued by these dialogue systems in games. I mean, like, again, a lot of people don't even notice these things, but just now that I've been working on my own game for so long, <laughs> you, you really uh, think about the decisions that the developer made. You know, like having a system like this, for one thing, you don't have to worry about lip syncing. Uh, you don't have to, the, the character, you know, they're just kind of in idle mode up here. You know, your attention is down here, so there's really no reason to be looking up there to see if they're making gest appropriate gestures and things of that sort. And they also don't give you, like, uh, dozens of options here. You know, which, of course, makes it a lot easier from, I think, easier to play and to, uh, <laughs> to design. You know, what was it? Was it, uh, which game was that? Torment, I think, that had just, seemed like an ungodly number of options every time. You know, it took you a long time just to read through all your, all of the options. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, they'll do stuff like the... You know, I always think this is cool when you give a little tip. Or like a, an option that you can't select because you're not silver wing. Gives you some insight as to, well, maybe next time you play, maybe you'll do the silver wing. <clears throat> you can have those options, see what that's about. It's also a spot if you want to work in skills. You know, if you want to give somebody a special option if they have high, the high enough brain. Yeah, proficiency in a skill, that skill, that sort of thing. Ask her what's so dangerous about this orange. But I have an orange? At the orange. What is this orange? Oh, orange wing, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> They're talking about a fruit for a second. I just follow orders. Even if his crime was embezzlement, I have to keep him cuffed. Those are the rules. Olison shrugs in a sharp, mechanical way, as if racking the slide of an assault rifle. See, this is a good way to kind of combine some, it's like a novel, describing things this way instead of having to show you the animation up close, like the shrug. You know, what would that even look like? <laughs> you can use your words. Continue. Our friends from the administration didn't deign to inform me about this man's record. Could be I'm escorting a serial killer. 
It's corporate policy, you know. She gives the silver a vengeful look. Okay. What's going on with this guy up here? He looks... Something strange going on with the lighting. Okay, well, I'm, I gotta... I need to focus on the dialogues. Okay, so she doesn't like this orange thing. Oh, these are the guys that were criminals, right? Okay, that's why she doesn't like him. A man with a mustache and a blue jumpsuit is standing at the window, studying the construction site below through the occasional break in the clouds. His badge reads Igor Patan, planner. Igor. You know anybody named Igor? The blue taps Do you have on the Igors glass in the match that audience I love to know. To come and take a look. Seems like he doesn't speak English. Probably a beautiful name, Igor. For some reason, whenever I hear that name, I think about it. <laughs> I want to tell you, <coughs> just, you know, in case there is somebody out there named Igor. I'll just stop there. <laughs> uh, the blue taps on the glass with one finger and gest gestures you to come and take a look. Seems like he doesn't speak English. Oh. He's got a mustache. Okay, let's talk to Tomoko. A young, dark-haired woman is staring through the illuminator, her gaze glued to the slowly approaching desert. She's whispering softly. We've crossed the border. No way back now. She turns to you. The shiny badge on her white jumpsuit reads, Tomoko Kimura, physiologist. As the woman takes in your black uniform, her smile fades. There are six people in this capsule, two of them in black jumpsuits. Not a statistically significant sample, but the trend is evident. She says with a squint. Hmm. Kimura shakes her head disapprovingly and turns back to the illuminator. This place is a scientific treasure trove, and you're treading all over it in your jackboots, blowing oh, up doors on. that are thousands Jack of years boots. old, acting like you own this world. What devilment. Argue that you have a duty to protect Cronus personnel from the dangers. Say that there are lots of oranges under the dome and some of them are dangerous. Oh, I see. Eh, go with the first one. Kimura <clears throat> isn't impressed. Protecting us from the dome, really. And who's going to protect the dome from you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we've done that. Let's see if we can study this interface a little bit better. Fist punch. Headbutt, kick, karate chop. Some of these are locked. Unarmed. Ah, upgrade weapon. I got a stealth mode. Over here, it looks like we've got various logs. Scan. Bolt throwing. <coughs> Throw a bolt to see if... I assume they're going to show us all this stuff later, so I'll just ignore that. But this looks like skills down here. I got a couple different rows of those. Okay, character quests. Newcomer to Concord. You left Spire Station on Transport Pond. Your journey begins. Alright. Inventory. Got some com bonds. Com bonds. Scanner, inactive Selectron, uh, third letter from Cronus. Please accept our sincerest congratulations. From this day forward, you are officially part of the Cronus ranks. All right, so that's our sort of a welcome letter. And a reputation, a map. Porthole door. Doom. This is a really good looking interface. It's, it looks good. And I'm sure I guess this is the time. <coughs> we got a red. Okay, pause. What am I supposed to be doing? Have I talked to everybody? Stopping by the door's porthole, you watch as the ground slowly approaches. It looks brown black through the tinted glass. 
and smoky blue at the horizon. It almost seems like the clouds are pulling apart there. You peer into the rusty clouds of dust blowing along a dirt road leading south. This is cool. The southern sector. Every black winger has heard the whispers about Operation Simoon. A major offensive under preparation since the early days of development of the dome. Cronus is recruiting troops capable of capturing the southern territory. An area heavily guarded by the forefathers' defense systems. Maybe you yourself will end up in one of those troops. Hmm. Just as you're about to move away from the window, you notice a whirlwind beginning to form above the ochre plain. The gathering storm drifts unhurriedly above the Oker? desert, a <laughs> crown of green lightning flashing at its core. Clearly no ordinary weather phenomenon. It must be one of those anomalies. You freeze by the window, <coughs> unable to avert your gaze. Okay, these guys must have had the big 64 crayons and their crayon box. Just stuck with plain old yeller. Uh, stand up on your tiptoes, try to make out the buildings. Stay that way until landing. Stay where you are, trying to see if you can spot the first. Uh, stay at the window. I don't know. The outlines of the landing site, blurred by clouds of dust, appear behind the greenish glass of the porthole. The capsule shudders as the braking devices engage. Oh, this is a pretty good use of resources here too, so they use a little sound effect. So it kind of suggests you almost imagine what's happening without them having to you know, physically show you everything. Animating that. So I think so far I'm really impressed with what they've done here. And granted, we <laughs> it's at the start of the game, but you know, it's, it's, it seemed like a strong narrative. I mean, this is really sucking me in. I want to figure out what's going on. It's not overwhelming. Wow, that looks really good. Okay, so I'm kind of behind that. So they, they kind of make me look quiet so I can see. All that occluded. And there we go. Okay, so hold the middle mouse button down. That's spins around. Uh, is there... Oh, here we go. And in case you can rotate the camera using E and Q as well as zoom in and out. Uh, camera's not tied to a character. You can move it using the keys. Now, can I hold like a mouse button down and scroll the map? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so it's... Just... Oh. Really do pay out. It's a little bit strange, but I guess I can get the hang of this. What am I trying to do? Talk to this guy, I assume. I assume Ludovico Nuzzi. Come here. Come on now, or you'll miss everything. A cheerful man in a white lab coat grabs you by the sleeve. A badge reading Ludovico Nuzzi, scientific analyst, export department, dangles loosely on his clean uniform, which still smells pungently of washing powder. <laughs> Good detail. Look over there! He points upward with a sharp, wide gesture and hands you his field binoculars. Look over there! He points upward with a sharp, wide gesture and hands you his field binoculars. You raise the binoculars to your eyes. Under fourfold magnification, the whirling cloud above the rust-colored plains looks even stranger. Its core glows with flickering green light and flashes rhythmically, and that rhythm seems to form a complicated pattern. Nazi bends close to your ear. Fascinating. Do you want me to bring some filters? If we intercept the red and blue spectrums, we'll see something amazing. It's like a signal some kind of message this is just i mean <laughs> this is really good so far <laughs> i like what they're doing here and again if you know games i complain about it's like so much dialogue and stuff that's no there's no clear reason like why you should even care about all this stuff they're telling you 
Uh, but this game is really nice because you like right put you down there and like this thing is over there. It's what the heck is that? Yeah, we're gonna have to deal with this imminent, imminently. So it gives you good uh, reason to care about what's going on. It's, you know, it's good storytelling. Okay, I actually have, I can actually do a special option on my reconnaissance 30. Stop watching the storm. Okay, let's try that. Without tearing your gaze away from the binoculars, you turn around slowly, studying Binocular. the dome's horizon. Yeah, it looks like whoever they got to do the narration decided to correct some of the grammar. Uh, you turn around, okay. It's somewhat unexpected that the dome looks horribly empty. Your eyes find some construction pits dug directly in the sand, and concrete blocks laid beside them. There are almost no roads, or not sealed ones. Only one highway with yellow surface marking stretches among the sand drifts. See so you get it's good, crisp. Does it go on? You know, a lesser game would have had me you know, sit through like three or four more paragraphs <laughs> to say the same thing. <laughs> you know, keep it short, keep it sweet. That's the way to go. They're doing that. Okay, ask him what scientific analyst. Or tell him you need to go. Might as well get some more info. The scientist looks blankly at you, then down at his lab coat. Ah, this? This? He lets out a blaring laugh. Well, they could have just had the narrator laugh, but okay. Ludovico points at the building behind him. <clears throat> I work in Concord Station, categorizing relics. My job is to classify them by rarity. Then the blues package them, silvers issue the documentation, and oranges move them to the cargo capsule. Just like the one you arrived in. Definitely. Roadside picnic. Nazi points upward. Then the capsule takes the relics way up there, all the way to the spire, then to crystal sands by the funicular. They get auctioned off and turned into money. It's not like I endorse this, but... We all like ourselves a good paycheck, right? That we do. Support me on Patreon. Also, send me a funicular. <laughs> I want a funicular. <laughs> yeah, everybody needs a funicular. He offers you his binoculars once again. Do you want to have a look at the spire? It's amazing. But then, you can look at the spire anytime. Now that sandstorm, that's what's truly amazing. Nazi looks from you to the capsule and to the landing terminal entrance. He flings his arms up. Oh, Miss Scusi! Excuse me, I'm so sorry. You'd better get going or you'll be late for check-in. Your colleagues are already inside, and the storm is growing stronger. Miss Scusi! Yeah, the storm is growing stronger. The white mutters in fascination, eyes glued to his binoculars. Which is fixed on the spinning <laughs> world of clouds. The white. That's kind of strange. The white. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> I've been talking to you. Welcome back from the conversation I'm having with you. Uh, shouts over the growling howl of the wind. See ya. See ya. Okay, so I need to get. Take a little break too, so let's see if we can save it here. Where is there we go? Save. Can I create a new save? Uh, yeah, but let's just call this save number one. <clears throat> Alright. We'll be back momentarily, but for you it will be instantly. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Bring it back into this. As usual, the little brief pause turned into an <laughs> hour-long excursion for plants. We are back. Now, I don't know if I'll have the same shirt when I record the uh, little, uh, intro piece. I'll show you this now if you haven't seen it already. <laughs> Looks like you can sort of make it out. Anyway, I think this is a fun t-shirt, especially if you're a total nerd like <laughs> You and me. Uh, okay, where are we? Uh, just talking to this guy about something. I wonder what ever happened to that Stellar Tactics game. Remember that? 
Need to check up on that project. Attention. Attention. Please handle relics carefully. Hmm. In case of damage, your life will be forfeit. It's kind of a... A lot of this reminds me of Mass Effect. I guess any game with the sort of sci-fi setting will do that. Okay. Quests. Throughout the game, you'll perform various tasks, some of which lead you through the story, as well as others that reveal different aspects of life under the dome. Man, I guess they're assuming that you never played a CRPG before, which is good. You know, rather uh, err on that side than assuming too much knowledge. Okay. Usually there's a button. Oh, there we go. So holding down the Alt key brings up all the tool tips. Vega Drinks vending machine, trash bin, Monty James's suitcase. Hand dryer. <laughs> Wash basin. <laughs> I wonder how much of this, uh, how many of these assets they created themselves versus what they were able to purchase. You know, one of the great things about Unity is that asset store. And, uh, it's kind of like the Humble Bundles and the Steam sales. They'll have these asset sales every now and then. Just had one. You can just pick up some fantastic stuff. I mean, absolute commercial quality uh, models, animations, sounds, music, you know what, you name it. Okay, when we reach destination, the first task is to register at reception. Okay, where is... Reception. So I guess there. But you know, the way they've got this set up makes me think I should talk to this person. So let's just go ahead. Monty James. Wearing thick, glittering spectacles, is sitting at an on an orange couch, nervously fingering his badge, fingering his badge, which reads Monty James. Large suitcase rests at his feet with a leaflet about the dome. Glad to meet you. Oh, it's this guy again. Uh, it's you. How do you like the inside of the dome? Uh, not ready to answer, I guess. I forgot to add my name to the new recruits manifest. <laughs> so we could offer to try and register him or just leave. Uh, we could try to offer, I guess. Bribe or barter. Huh. Wow, <laughs> no, show soda. Show soda, okay. Logo is a disco ball with a black to white gradient and a big label reading show. Is that some kind of Bulgarian humor? Wayward extra cigarettes. <laughs> Perception plus two, charisma plus one for smoking a cig. Definitely tell this was made in Eastern Europe. Okay, I don't know if I would need those items. Attention. Mildly curious about what the cigarette animation looks like, but we'll just uh, exit out of that for now. Are you for real? That would be incredibly kind. Let me cheer him up. Come back again. Just great, Mr. Monty James. With luck like yours, I wouldn't spend any money on the lottery. <laughs> Greetings, newcomer. A tall receptionist watches you from behind his desk with a bored, haughty look. He waves impatiently at you to approach. The employee glances at you indifferently. His upper lip is ever so slightly uh, yes, curved. The obligatory bored receptionist scene. Action. All new employees must register first thing. Uh, come up to the desk, please. The nameplate on the desk tells you you're talking with Dean Rayhead. Administrator. I hope this is leading s somewhere. <laughs> All the fun of a waiting room. The administrator slaps himself on the forehead. Ah, I almost forgot the regulation pre-registration greeting. Just a second. Ray Hutt produces a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from beneath the desk, rewinds the tape to the beginning, and presses play. The speakers explode with a harsh crackling sound, over which the tick-tick of a metronome slowly grows louder. Fun. Solemn music begins to play 
and the administrator's face takes on a serious expression. Dear employee, on behalf of the Cronus Foundation, I, Administrator Dean Rayhat, welcome you to your new life under the dome. The administrator clears his throat and dome. continues. By joining our company, you choose the path of science and progress. You are among mankind's best, and we ask that you live up to this. Dean squints yes, down at yes, the Yes, I want to fight Deserve some rats. Title. Do your job honestly. Obey the law. Respect your colleagues and... The music fades and the administrator finishes his speech. And together we will build the best possible future for all mankind. Good stuff. Dean puts the tape recorder away. Now that we're done with the official greeting, I'll register you and upgrade your Selectron. Okay? Okay. You're ready, I guess. Dean's hands hover over the keyboard. He gives you a nod. I don't know what... Is this significant somehow? <laughs> Uh, just dictated, I guess. You spell out your first and last names and specify your wing, profession, and test results. The administrator's fingers fly. Rayhet scans the computer screen. So your position in the waiting list was 63,784. <laughs> You've been assigned to Magellan Station. A special bus will bring you there after a series of briefings. I get the ride on a special bus! So I can update the firmware. So I can update firmware. Dean snaps the docking port of your pass to a recess in the casing of his computer. Thank you for that detail. The administrator returns your Selectron. Here you are. You now have first level clearance. As a Black Wing employee, you get access to the barracks, the armory, surveillance rooms, remand centers, and other specialized facilities. Dean continues. All new employees have a short list of tasks to perform on arrival. Oh, boy. Do you want to hear all the details, or just the short version? <laughs> short. Ray Hett snorts. To make it short, get your uniform from storage, okay. your weapons from the armory, pass the sub, and complete your weapons training at the training it's a zone. tutorial. Then learn how to use the scanner, avoid anomalies, and properly catalog anything you observe. Last, go to the waiting room and wait for the bus to Magellan. Awesome. The reward for doing all this is a... Dean Bus sits ride. back in his armchair. That's it. I hope there aren't any questions. Okay, get out of here. Ray Hett claps his hands in satisfaction. Great. He reaches for the tape recorder, but thinks better of it. Protocol calls for a little welcoming preamble, but dash it all, that's nonsense. Welcome to Concord Station. Thank you. As he's about to turn away, Dean suddenly remembers something. Oh yes, I sent your mail to your Kairos. Check your new messages. Well, that's all, I think. My Kairos. Messages sent to you by various game characters are stored in the Messages section of your Kairos. Messages from some employees' computers also end up there. Blah, 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 blah. Where's a rat? Okay, something about storage. I get a uniform. Uh, where do you think I should go? This guy's got a... <laughs> what looks like a uniform logo. There we go. Okay, talk to him, I suppose, and get our... Behind the storage counter, you see a small, neat guy. His gingery hair shines with something like brilliantine. His brilliantine? badge says... Brilliantine? Sidney Maynard. Story what is Brilliantine? Is that some gem? <laughs> Brilliantine. His badge says Sydney Maynard. The silver perks up at your approach. A thick logbook appears at once from under the counter. Sydney puts on thick glasses that seem to age him five decades. Okay, now we're starting to get into too much detail. Just get on with it. I don't this need to know the guys with this the glasses. <laughs> I don't need all these descriptions right? of the guys' glasses. You can also purchase any equipment you need for the uh, desert. Yeah, you Maynard adjusts his glasses in a business-like manner. Before I give you the uniform, please listen to these short oh, how you put on the pair of socks. All right. Sidney fiddles with his hairstyle. So, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Life under the dome can be dangerous. You may get shot, spill acid on yourself, get electrocuted, or suffer the effects of a dangerous anomaly. 
and may also freeze to death or get fried. Damn. That's why it's important to wear protective equipment when traveling outdoors. Of course, in hazardous I situations, never leave the house. Get damaged, and Without the more my protective damaged, equipment, more often one has to repair it. The silver steps back from his counter to indicate the repair kit boxes piled in the back of the warehouse. Would I really even leave the house? He points back at the shelves behind him. We've got repair kits for this gear. There are blue wing specialists ready to help you at any large base. Of How course. many wings? But they're are? not always available. So blue, you orange, better learn black, how to use silver, kits and workbenches on white. your own. It's a useful skill. Oh, I got a crafting system. Sydney rests the logbook on the desk. That's all the instructions. Now, the silver okay. disappears into the back for a while and returns with the small. Please tell package. me there's a small rat in the package for me to fight. Unfolding the package, Maynard shows you a brand spanking new uniform. <laughs> oh boy, I'm so excited Standard about wearing a uniform. Equipment, trousers, boots, jacket. Everything is stain resistant yeah, and armor resistant. That's, Bear in that's mind, big. this gear is made from all natural materials. Good. Oh, Cronus takes care of its employees. He says with a bit of swagger. He raises a finger. One more important thing. In accordance with Order 16-225, helmets and gloves are not issued, but they're available for purchase from me. Please bear in mind that a full set includes headgear or a mask, jacket, trousers, gloves, and boots. So we have to buy. So this must be their. Sydney hands you the package. The little yeah, way to make sure uniform. that you know how to barter. Sydney adjusts his glasses. Sure, I'll show you what we've got. Sydney scribbles something in his logbook. All right, what do Please we need? Come back time if you need something. Some work gloves or engineer gloves. How much money do we have? Is this money? <laughs> Forty. <laughs> Okay, those are. Can't even afford those. Is this all I got? How can I even afford these items? Soldiers' gloves, a hundred. Think you just give them to me anyway? Uh, let's just try it. What was it? What do you say? I needed a helmet and gloves. No. Maybe there's a barter? Or like a haggle? No, I don't... How am I supposed to... Maybe I find some money lying around? Alright. Uh, let's see. Good old paper doll system. Now this is... You know, I kind of... I've always liked this... This kind of system, you know, you can see it going on. Sometimes you could just drag it directly onto the character, but here you have to drag it into the slot. Okay, does that go somewhere? Nope. Is that? Nope. Okay. Been quite snazzy. Very, very black uniform. Okay, get yourself a weapon. Talk to Margarita. Where is Margarita? Man, I could use a Margarita right now. Margarita, Margarita, where's Margarita? Okay, so seriously, where's, where is Margarita? See, we have a bigger map. There we go. Uh, Milo, there she is. So let's see. There I am. It's like a little back to the north. A little jog. Does that look right? No. Where? Hmm. No, I went completely the wrong way as I want to do. I think it's actually over here. Anything urgent, Mr. Maxim. There she is. 
The smell of good tobacco wafts off this tall, portly woman from a meter away. Good tobacco. A black lacquered pipe, an open logbook full of signatures, and a metal flip calendar sit on the counter in front of her. A small nameplate reads, Margarita Tukachenko. Tukachenko. The woman fixes her coppery hair with one hand and casually lights her pipe. Never did this game. Do I must I have a thing for redheads. Her voice is deep and gravelly. Okay, give me the weapon. Margarita thumbs back a couple of pages in her logbook. I see. Yeah, this, you know, the first part this of this was, was so snappy. Receipt. Now we're really getting kind of bogged she down. She glances at her Kairos, looks at you, snorts, right, and right. returns just, in a few just minutes just holding me the a large gun. gun. You like big toys? All right. She presents the weapon in her outstretched hands. Take this and sign here. There are more fun things in store, but they're not for everyone. You see? After racking the slide, Tukachenko points the gun at the ceiling. High firing rate and good accuracy, even in burst fire mode. Enjoy. Just don't point it at me. The black hands you the weapon. <laughs> Ooh. You know, I don't know if I've ever seen a woman smoking a pipe. You know, I don't think I've ever seen that. Oddly enough. Accept the firearm carefully with barrel aimed downward like you were trained. <laughs> One hand pointed at Tachinko <coughs> or to Kachinko and declared, This is my turf now. <laughs> oh no. Just take it. Margarita drags on her pipe and releases a puff of thick yellow smoke. I see you know the rules and won't cause problems. Good for her, man. I don't know about. I've been trying to smoke a pipe lately and. I mean, it is hard to keep that thing lit. I don't know how people do it. You pretty much have to keep the lighter, <laughs> you know, right there at the end of the pipe every day, every puff. I'm guessing a lot of that is user error, I'm not going to lie. But I thought it'd be easier. Ask about the weapon's drawbacks. The armorer shrugs, puffing indifferently on her pipe. It's the least I could do. She's got a pipe! We have she's a got a pipe! She's definitely got a pipe! Because she forgot she's got a pipe. receive only rubbish. If you want the real deal, check out the weaponry shop. Or me. Right. For free? The freebie is garbage. Sign your name here in the meantime. Margarita reaches under her counter and produces a set of ammunition. A new set of ammo is issued for every task, but there's so much bureaucracy you'll go daft. Expenditure report. Form number 16. Disposal form. The silver's running true to form. So if you need more ammo, I recommend you either search oh, or borrow okay. for it. Oh, we're Leaning over the counter, I the black points no somewhere off to one side. Now it's time for your training. Father B is already waiting for you by the big gate. He's a bit dotty, but before the training zone, go see that Who's wizard there? guy with his toothpicks. Be careful around him, though. Don't let him pitch you a line. Psychic my ass. She winces in disgust. Oh, I like this margarita. She's <laughs> my kind of lady. Right, functional keys. Uh, what is this business? Several modifiable keys that will make your gameplay much more comfortable. Hold down shift to view a more detailed tooltip. Hold control to attack characters and doors. <laughs> I don't like the look of you, door. Hold Alt. Okay, I've already figured that out. Alright. Uh, who did they say I need to talk to? Uh, Andre Mihal. That person. A lean silver with thick black hair and a huge cigar clamped in his How teeth. How much do you think we're going to hear about this cigar? As you approach, he there, flashes a sly grin why is there no, and slowly uh, raises an outstretched hand above the table. Where's the picture? Something really weird happens. All the paper clips, pencils, scattered toothpicks, and bits of trash float up from the table and hang in the air. The silver badge reading Andre Mihai, science instructor, floats up as well. This is like, must be telekinesis. Uh, 
when skeptically you're not going to be fooled by some parlor trick, keep in astonishment. <laughs> Approaches if nothing unusual is occurring. Yeah, might as well play along. The silver trills with laughter. He approves of your reaction. The objects fall back to the tabletop with a light clap. Silver, white, black. He's going to take a little getting used to. <laughs> <laughs> Here for oh, the briefing. There we go. There's a picture. Shall we get to it? He takes the cigar out of his mouth cigar. and exhales a lush cloud of smoke. Every time it mentions cigar, you got to take a shot. Or take a drag on your... Whatever it is you're smoking on. Say, you're ready for the psionics briefing. The silver props his elbows on the table. Anyway, here's the deal. It's more profitable for people with a high psyche to study psionics. Give me your hand. Not waiting for an answer, he grabs your hand with strong, dark fingers. I wonder why the picture keeps disappearing. Andre gropes your hand briefly, then lets go, disappointed. The pills, huh? The anti-migraine, sleeping pills, neuroleptics, downers, what do you mean you don't take them? Well, off you go then. That means no talent, huh? Why waste time? No wasting time now. But alas, regulations demand it, so I'll give you a glove too. Regulations, huh? What? <laughs> Are you following any of this? The silver takes a thin glove covered in talc from his desk and passes it to you. Look, a glove, right? But it isn't just a glove. This is an ooh mama hold me tight glove. It takes energy from your noggin, your psyche, and pew concentrates it. Okay. He counts off on his fingers. Learn psionics. Put on the glove. Transform energy into the necessary shape. That's the whole briefing. Simple? Simple. Now to your questions, huh? <laughs> it's about this time you're looking at the syllabus, trying to ascertain whether you're really in this class. If <laughs> you have stumbled into the wrong department. Uh, said something about a glove. Is that... Where's your gun? Let's go ahead and arm that. What is that thing? I guess that's the glove. So all we need is a helmet, I think. Is there a place to put the ammo? Let's see it. Okay, let's see. What else? Oh, I guess we have to talk to him. Wait, we did this. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're good. Fine instructor Winston Botherby at the Concord Station. Botherby. There he is. Way blocked. Uh, why is it black? I'll complain to the Silvers about that idiot. The game world is vast and divided in many separate locations, some of which may be temporarily inaccessible. <clears throat> Transitions between locations. Usually they like doors sealing off a darkened area, and just a special marked area as if the way is free, click on them. Okay. As you reach to open the sliding door, an engineer in a bright blue jacket stops you. Hold on there, Chief. It's out of order. See? You're a newcomer, right? It's a straight up open house here today. He offers you his hand. According to his badge, this is <coughs> Maxim Penkovsky, technician. <laughs> the technician slaps the door with one hand. You have to wait until I'm done. Some orange jammed up the lock with chewing gum just for a laugh. They're like animals, those oranges. Marking their territory. If you ask me, they're too gracious about those <laughs> bastards in Crystal Sands. Yep. Yeah. Ask him whether he can open the door. Penkovsky grunts angrily. <laughs> I wish I could. I'm gonna have to disassemble, clean. Maxime extracts a thin, sharp, precision probe okay, from behind his ear. Well, there's another way. You want to learn Lock something picky. about picking locks? Yes. It's a useful skill in all sorts of situations. He the blues getting excited. <laughs> all right, uh -oh. looky here. Penkovsky presses his pick lock, and an odd device resembling a hybrid of a screwdriver and a can opener into your hand. A sonic can opener. Using a mechanical pick lock is easy peasy. No special skill required. They wear out after a few locks. 
while the old-fashioned kind is another thing entirely. Cheap, one use. But one has to know how to use it right. That's a tool for a master. Maxime takes out another picklock and crouches by the door. So I'm really curious if they'll have some sort of sequence, some little mini game for picking the lock, or is it just a die roll? He gives you a quick lesson on how to pick a lock. By the way, you can carry your tools in your belt. I never it's quite figured out if I like right the there. game. Pankowski like shows you his utility Skyrim, belt, where you sort of have a little all mini game. Tools and gadgets. Actually, finding tools under the dome <clears> is no problem at all. <clears throat> there are even devices for hacking terminals and so on. Maxime hoists up his belt. The blue solemnly raises his index finger. And one more thing. Always use brand name stuff if you can. Groovy produces good kits. Modus and Supercolor do too. They've all got fat contracts with Cronus, so they care about quality. He looks at the door again. Damn these locks. Though I'd rather be doing this than fixing I want a new Coca Cola. Those are a real pain in the ass. Hey. I sometimes come across locked things. No kidding, this is a role-playing game. Use right button on a locked door and select the desired ability from the list. You can break down the door from brute force or open a terminal. Okay, let's see. Ooh, I like the way that sort of popped Get a lock up. pick and attach it to your utility belt. And then, um, apply it to the got door. got to attach yes. it to our apply ability belt. is the proper word. Electric lock pick. Where's our ability belt? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, do we have a belt? Uh, were we supposed to get a belt from somebody? Uh, let's see. Lock picking. What in the heck am I looking at here? It's acting like I was supposed to have You're some sort of great. utility. Bro. All right, off you go. I'll keep working on this lock because of that orange. Hey oh. <laughs> hey oh. Welcome under the dome. An amazing excursion to a world of new technology and the riddles. Well, at least uh, I don't think I've come across any cussing yet. It's good. Listen to this no a lot of half bombs and stuff. You know it's supposed to be fiction. Just come up with your own cuss words. Uh, Sebastian Van Olden. All right. <clears throat> oh yeah, we're supposed to be talking to Winston Botherby. Welcome under the dome. An amazing excursion to a world of new technology and the riddles of an ancient Winston. civilization. Winston. Listen Urgent. to this information. Winston. Useful for all wings. The dome from the Where are you, Winston? Victoria Lagrange. I had him figured out, and then I got. Welcome under the dome. An amazing excursion to a world of new technology and the. Where is this guy? George Zeitz. And receive a colorful leaflet. Is that the one? No, that's the psychic guy. Okay, where is this? Sebastian. Welcome under the dome. An amazing excursion to a world of new technology and the riddles of an ancient civilization. Uh, Winston Botherby. There it is. Okay, I'm going to talk to Winston. A middle-aged black is sitting behind the counter with his hands in that his lap. That just doesn't sound right. The buttons and zippers on his uniform are polished to a shine, and even his badge, Winston Botherby Instructor, has been buffed so much it hurts to look at it. So the question is, I hope these characters, they were reading all this, these details about I hope this isn't the only place we'll ever see them. Botherby frowns as you approach. <clears throat> the first act is being late for the briefing. Are you going to be late for your funeral as well? <laughs> That's pretty snappy. Snapster. Wish. No, sir! <laughs> the black looks you over. Yes, I see the weapon. The black. Check mark. Mm. Looks like you are fully prepared to disappoint me. You are prepared. Right, employee? Oh, yeah. Tell him you're against violence. <laughs> so you have a few things to do. Botherby right. leans over the counter and directs you to the doors. Behind this door is a combat simulation computer. Launch it and begin your course. Oh, boy. 
He raises his simulation input. within the, the video game. The conditions in the train the zone closely simulate those one would experience in the field. Oh, just please tell me this. I'll settle for a virtual rat. Just give me something to kill. And try to aim the pulling a notepad from his pocket. The instructor jots down your Three name. Targets. Your okay. goal is to hit. Okay, is this it? Yep. Yeah. Go, 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 go. I don't want to learn about terminals. I want to terminate. Okay. Preparing for combat. Before entering combat. Make sure you're prepared. Duh. Check your health. Duh. Move your weapons from in inventory to the hand slot. Load your gun. Prepare medicine to counter health damage. Consider the sequence of your actions in the direction of your contact. Or, well, <laughs> just make a bloody mess. <laughs> yes, I want to make a bloody mess. Uh, whatever. Get in there. Ah. Ooh, what? Okay, here we go. Turn-based combat, baby. In case as a turn-based combat system. Hang on, I'm gonna stop and restart my video. I'm trying to make a habit of doing that, so <coughs> I'm always having these weird sound sync issues, so maybe that'll solve it. All right. <coughs> in case. Turn based combat system, the move sequence of your opponents, allies, and yourself. The move sequence of your opponents, allies, and yourself. I guess that's. It sounds a little weird, but I guess that's right. It's determined by initiative. Uh, action points are spent on moving, using points, and or using abilities and attacking. If after performing all your desired actions, you still have some points left, you could spend them on increasing your defense class by clicking on the cover button. Or you can finish the current turn and save them for the next one. Oh, okay. <coughs> it's very You know, how did Wasteland 3 do it? That sounds... Sounds similar, anyway. Makes sense, though. Okay, what are we up against here? Training holograms... Right. It's very wastelandy for sure. Okay. Now what's up with these? Is it just me or some of this kind of obscured? Like, oh, I get it. I got two different. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. So I got the psychic glove. <laughs> it's so rad. Oh, it's so bad. I should have said, oh, messed up the... Messed up the wizard line. Uh, it's just... Okay. This is my machine gun. Track on reload. Is it not loaded? I guess we'll find out. Okay, well, just assuming this is like Wasteland, we should get behind cover. So how do I know what's... Don't see a way to tell what's cover. You know, Wasteland had those little shields that would pop up and show you where you're covered from. Maybe this doesn't have it. Okay, anyway. What is this thing? Thunder Electric Mine. Hmm. Hold shift to speed up combat. Okay. So it looks like this guy's got a little bit of some kind of blue shield there. It says zero. So he's got no cover. 100%. I guess that means I'm not going to miss. <laughs> okay. Now let's if I right click on him. Single shot. Not enough action points. Or I could examine him. Perform, perf perform a visual inspection. Alert, saved AP. Ah. Well, I get a lot of info. Ah, I love it. I need to dig so deep into this. <laughs> Not enough. Oh, I can't pop him. How many action points does it take to shoot? Oh, I guess it takes four. Oh, I moved one too many. Okay, let's see. Now, okay, cancel, cancel. How do I do the cover thing? 
I got a bunch of options here actually. Let's see. Singles, long burst, tracer. Reduce the target's evasion by negative 20. But reduce by negative 20? Uh, okay, <laughs> gotcha. Saturation fire, kneeling position. Uh, I assume aiming position. Butt stroke? <laughs> No. Butt stroke? <sighs> yeah, guys, you probably don't want to call this butt stroke. I don't know, maybe you do. What does it do anyway? <laughs> I don't want to know. I, re I retract the question. Scan, bolt throwing, dig, force, pickpocket, lock picking. Okay. Uh, there we go. Spent remaining action points. Spent. Should be spend. Spend remaining action points to increase defense class. Okay. Or I can skip turn. Which one was it that lets me have uh, more action points? Is that the skip? I guess we could. Let's try that next time. For now, let's do the uh, cover. Right, here comes the hologram. Ooh. It looks like I do have some cover, that little blue shield there. In almost every battle, you are surrounded by interactive objects. Traps, pools of toxic goo, flames over a barrel of fuel that can be blown up with a well-aimed shot. All this can give you an advantage or conversely complicate your life. Everybody goes about their business. New round. Okay, let's go ahead. Surely we can shoot this guy from here. Let's see what kind of options we have. Do the single shot, the burst shot, the long burst. So this one does five shots, three shots, and one shot. 10 to 15 points of damage. Let's try the uh, burst shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it took away all of my action points. Okay, I think I'm going to try the skip turn. We'll see if we get an extra, some extra uh, points. Yeah, saves two AP, so that's the save. Oh, he's still missing. Or did he hit? He missed, right? I don't know if these holograms can actually hit you or not. Okay, so I got some extra... Extra action points. I could also shoot for this guy. Let's try to shoot the mine and see what happens. Mm. He's got a barrel there too. Maybe I could shoot the barrel. Out of the firing line. Ah, okay. So we need to make sure we got at least four. Can't move there. Should be able to move there. Okay, I guess I still can't hit that. Not in the firing line. Fine. I don't think it did any damage to him. Uh, where's my health bar? I'm still at full health. I thought it said it hit me. I want to hit that barrel, damn it! Uh, there we go. Oh, but he's still alive. Saves one AP. I can't help but say I'm stoked. <laughs> can't help but say I'm stoked. Well, I got a pretty good bit of XP for doing that. You know what I need to know? What is the button for the quick save? Let's see. Quick save is F5. Okay, let's go ahead and try that out. Okay. Goody, 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 goody. Do I have to talk to him again? 
dialogue with weapon drawn. Make sure you don't have a weapon drawn when you start talking to someone. Okay. Bother be nods grandly. You made it through training without making a total fool of yourself. Congratulations. I'll send a report up the chain about your completely unanticipated success. <laughs> You're dismissed, employee. Nice. Okay, so I think we're almost done. I'm glad they gave me a little taste of combat there, even though it's just training, you know, but something to... You don't want to wait too long to give the player a little taste. But I'm sure I'll come here in a year. Okay, and what else is there? Like real queen. Instructor Sebastian Van Olden. Attention, attention. This person. You see a tall scientist in a white lab coat, bathed in the dim lamplight. He almost appears to be hovering above the laboratory floor. Not smoking something? The man turns at your footsteps. He's holding a paper clipboard and a pencil. <laughs> His shimmering silver badge reads Sebastian Van Orden. The little town doctor where I grew up. I <laughs> think I was a chain smoker. Little doctor's office, man. I remember going there for a, a physical one time. The guy's just, you know, everybody there, nurses, doctors, everybody's puffing away. You know, this is, uh, they had to be in the probably mid-90s. I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> These doctors just don't give a damn. <laughs> he glances from you to the glittering watch on his wrist. I want us to respect one another's time. Please speak loudly, clearly, and to the point. Good. You must be the newcomer I was told about. Nice to meet you. Here, I need to take your blood pressure. Re hold my sig. <laughs> Finished with his unusual <laughs> greeting, he offers you his thin hand. Okay, greet him so you're here for the briefing. The scientist puts the clipboard aside, raises his watch for a closer look, and sets the timer. He shows you his watch dial. According to the rules of this briefing, I have to touch on a large number of topics. Therefore, I will do so very briefly. Do not interrupt me. When I'm finished, I'll answer your questions. Within regulations, of course. Sebastian of produces his handheld and clicks some buttons. I checked your scanner. It's working and is connected to the Minerva database. Everything you scan will earn you Kronos or Forefather's knowledge points. You know, there's, there's CRPGs where they want you to just sit back, relax, be patient, carefully read and or listen to all the dialogues and focus, you know. <laughs> and then there's ones where you're just like, you know, you, you, you make a character five minutes later, you, you're, you're mowing down rats. Definitely in that first category here. The instructor watches you with displeasure. Are you listening? Scan everything that might be of scientific interest. First of all, anomalies. They could be dangerous. Make sure to always have medication with you. He places a canvas pouch in your hand. This pouch is full of bolts. You can temporarily discharge an anomaly by throwing a bolt into it. It's primitive, but reliable. Van Olden pushes a button on his stopwatch. So, my oral briefing fell within the allotted span of time. <laughs> Any questions you want to ask me? Yeah, it could be the, the genre, too, science fiction. There's usually a lot more you have to know about what's going on. Yeah, most fantasy, it's like, oh, look, there's an orc over there. He wants to kill you. <laughs> you don't need to go over all this detail about it. So you say that you have no more questions ready to proceed. The scientist glances <clears throat> at his watch again. You're within the time limit for questions. The next step is training in the artificial eco zone. He rests one finger on the button in preparation to start the timer. You're going to go downstairs and scan relics. I will be monitoring your progress. Please note there are several radioactive anomalies in the eco zone. These are the same conditions you'll be working in in the field. Radioactive zones and relics are quite common under the dome. I guess you could say some games are more like books, some games are more like movies, some games are more like games. <laughs> he smoothly extracts a jar yeah, you know of yellow I mean. pills from his pocket. Here's your Arad 3. And one more thing, just a moment. 
He's doing something. <laughs> To follow him? An amazing excursion to a world of new technology and the riddles of an ancient civilization. Med kit. Belt item. Simple pick lock. Belt item. Hmm. You know, I don't. I can't tell if we're supposed to be wearing a belt or that's just a. Listen to this information, useful for all wings, a, and receive a, a call. metaphor. <laughs> Okay, I don't, we why am I, what's going on? Here. Master the use of the scanner. The am I just, literally just supposed to wait for him? Welcome under the dome. An amazing Please stand by Status for decontamination to end. Various actions such as eating food or taking medicines may impose certain status effects on you. Bleeding. I don't know about you, but I'm sure I'll come here and so got a decontamination effect over time. You have the scanning ability to perform a scanning. To perform a can we just say to scan? Select the ability of the panel and then click on the object that you want to scan. <coughs> For each successful scan, you receive knowledge points. One second. Now, for each successful scan, you receive knowledge points. Oh, that's cool. And the data obtained in the process is stored in your, I think they call their Kairos. Okie dokie. Those are the anomalies we're talking about. Van Olden gestures back at the eco zone. You haven't completed scanning everything yet. Finish the. Scan everything! Alright. <clears throat> scan. Wrong target. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe I have to go down there. Secret discovered. Ooh. Shovel required. I don't have a shovel. Wrong target. Be thing. careful around the anomalies. Touch yeah. one of them and you'll be injured. Are we supposed to, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> a journal entry, a successful scanning attempt. And he said something right, so about well, tossing a bolt ahead. into it. Weird. No, I don't think I... <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. No, uh, your butt. No. Okay, how do I like say <laughs> under it? And I am not being very, very coherent. Okay, there we go. Get around that. Scan this puppy. Object scan, and again. Watch out for anomalies. Okay. Touch one and you'll be injured. Oh, don't Hold touch the anomaly. anomaly. Ah! Journal entry. You didn't have to do it from that position. You could have gotten over this thing. Ah! Here we go. Sebastian meets you on the platform. Your finishing time is within the acceptable range. He clicks the stopwatch button, fixing the result time. You know, I hope they have plenty of those things, because that was fun. I like the idea of searching for those, and some might be hidden and hard to find. I like it. Okay. The scientist turns back to his notes. Not bad. One question. You observed <clears throat> several anomalies while scanning. Why do you think they appeared? I'd like to hear your opinion. The scientist assumes a superior expression. I knew you'd come <laughs> up with something like that. I see you understand nothing about the nature of anomalies. So let me add a couple of points. He glances at the shimmering blue light in the eco zone. The truth is, we don't know the precise reason for these phenomenon either. We actually know nothing, no matter how much we try to convince ourselves otherwise. Sebastian points a thin finger at the clustered lightning. 
I personally believe that the anomalies are the dome security mechanism. The ones you saw are relatively harmless, mm. but there are different anomalies in the desert, phenomena that toy with the human mind. Van Olden clasps his hands behind his back. I know you don't care, but I'll say it anyway. Sired to be wonder workers who can heal cancer with a wave of their hand and solve the secrets of the universe during their coffee break. For some reason, no one wants to understand that fundamental science is always an investment in the future. It produces no answers here and now. The White's gaze strays back to his clipboard. If something terrible happens under the dome one day, and I'm sure it will, science will protect no one. That is all. Off you go. I guess this is a combination of the under the dome and the uh, roadside picnic. Kind of cool. So there's, I mean, this is a good story. Good, good game world. A lot of <coughs> potential here. All right. Oh, you completed. Head to the back to the waiting area. Oh, we get to take a bus. Oh, yes. Can't wait for this bus. Where's the bus? Where's that waiting area? No. Oh it's a good looking level. I think this is the. Wait. Well, is that not right? Uh, let's see. Registration. This is the waiting area. Glad to meet you. <clears throat> I'm burial manager. See ya. Uh, hey, you're at it again, asshole. Okay, you got me, Butch. Clearly, you've interrupted some kind of a game. Three oranges. Oh, these are the uh, criminals. Ex cons. Your arms are outstretched during you flexibly. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, they're gone. Uh, head to the waiting area. All right, let me try to figure out what that what that literally means. I'm supposed to sit in a chair, maybe. Hey you, yeah you, dumbass. I'm talking. Hey. Ah. Large hairy orange with funny round little glasses. Fish snacks. How can I help? Uh, ask him gently what business he has to offer. Oh, this is because we selected criminal. Of course, you're black wing kitten, but otherwise you seem normal. All right. Here's the thing. See the hall behind my back? I just returned from there from shipping. I've been moving some crates. They were sealed. There are relics inside. Anyway, I can't get to those crates. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Bye bye. Stealth. <clears throat> Alright, I think we can get on the bus. Oh, you again. It was nice chatting. What? Alright, I guess that wasn't what I was supposed to do. Once more, head to the waiting area where the bus will take you. Where is this waiting area? Uh, training grounds, start an eco zone, the communications, the landing track, landing track. Garage door. I think I'm missing something. Head to the waiting area. Must be some clue here. 
see if we can find the one with the guy that had all the story. Story. Go to the waiting room and wait for the bus. Okay, so <laughs> where is Ladies the waiting room? This is the dome from the Oh, it's called Waiting Hall. Welcome under the dome, an amazing excursion to a world of new technology and the riddles of an ancient civilization. Listen the to this waiting hall. And receive a colorful leaflet. Wait in this hall. Ed, spit it out. I can see that something's bothering you. Well, employee, please come here. There's an urgent task for you. Oh, secret discovery. Forgotten case of papers. Ooh, what's this? An active spherical relic. A metallic seeming ball surrounded by petals of the same material, much heavier. Report on stolen relics. Guess I'll take it. What do you want? Adolf Schmitz, head of security. He wipes a bit of lint off your shoulder and adjusts the collar of your jumpsuit. Your uniform could use a wash. I just got the stupid thing. Got an urgent order for you. Your help is needed at a nearby object. Mr. Kingsley is waiting right now to give you your assignment. Ask why he needs you, but not the other black that arrived with you. Eh, let's go. You know, we're supposed to, we're soldiers, right? We're not supposed to ask too many questions. Just get to it. Attention. Right, passage so. What? Looks like you need to find someone from the administration. Oh, great. Probably should have actually read. Uh, da -da. I got her in your lap. He's Mr. Kingsley. Where is this Mr. Kingsley at? Oh boy. Where is Mr. Kingsley? Oh boy, somebody from administration, I think he said. I thought I saw a... There's registration. No, I don't need registration. I need administration, but where is that? Oh boy. What does that say? Research lab? Shooting range. Registration. Uh, you know, sometimes I hate to say it, but they could just <laughs> just stick a golden circle or something on the area they want me to go. And the air is as dry as a uh, I don't know. Welcome under the dome. An amazing excursion to a world. <coughs> <coughs> Let's go back and talk to this guy again, maybe. By a swimming pool. Terminal. Oh, jeez. I am so... So mixed up. Welcome. Registration. With bars and the Research lab. Information useful for all wings. Waiting hall. Let's go back and see if we can get some more info. Stein isn't seeing this. Adolf Schmitz. See ya. Nope. nope. Hiya. A very creative dye job. Reach for spontaneous good cheer down on you like a sledgehammer. Remember, our most awesome techie here. I'm also fast and strong. World, okay, well, I'm talking to this person. <laughs> You know why they transferred me closer to the administration and science lab, even though I'm a blue? Uh, 
Oh. They don't let me do anything. Awkward. I hope to see you again soon. Okay, well, just go to the area you haven't explored yet. <clears throat> uh, I can't get through there. The giant display glows welcomingly when you a gray old man with high cheekbones appears and squints out at you from the screen. Do you copy? He leans close to the camera, his glasses glittering. My name is Martin Kingsley. I'm chief officer of Magellan Base. <clears throat> we were supposed to meet in person, but unforeseen circumstances prevented that. One moment, I'll grab your file. He oh, reaches for something this is the right out of place. view and produces a thin folder with your name on the cover. Apparently, your file. Kingsley opens the folder to thumb through the pages. He marks one of the pages with a pencil. Why did you choose Blackwing? There are other divisions in the corporation you could have worked in. Kingsley's waiting for your answer. Ah, so you've always imagined yourself as a kind of mercenary. Killing for a living is your thing. <laughs> Yes, killing for a living. That's my thing. Say that. <laughs> Just imagine saying something like that in a job interview. <laughs> Say that developing your combat skills is important to you. Let's try that one. Martin nods and writes something down. Cronus has much to offer. Varied assignments, our own training zone, and the opportunity to move up through the ranks. Kingsley closes the file and folds his hands in front of him. Thank you for your reply. I learned a little more about you. Now I want you to learn a little bit more about us. Keep in mind, this is not a rehearsed speech. Definitely not. He assumes a serious expression. When the dome was discovered in 1971, it became a scientific and media sensation, a worldwide phenomenon, and likely the most significant discovery in the history of mankind. Kingsley drums his fingers on the unseen desk, his gaze focused somewhere beyond. I see. You were enticed here by radio advertising, telefilms, and all those interviews, billboards at every turn. Cronus wants the world to see the dome as a stage where something merry and fascinating is going on. But now that you're actually here, I want you to see the real picture. You can't make out his eyes behind the glare on his spectacles, but he seems to be staring directly at you. Here's the truth. Nobody was waiting for us inside the dome. It's neither a treasury of technologies nor a cemetery of the ancients. Perhaps what we're doing now is diffusing the world's most complicated bomb. Will our mission thrive? I believe so. If we work together and everybody does their part. He looks back at your file. I say, do what must be done. Because that's what the concept of the Five Wings is all about. Kingsley points at the camera. You're from Blackwing. Your duties are simple and straightforward. But you have to understand, everything you do is to maintain order and peace. Once people panic, they kill each other much quicker than the Dome ever would. You know, considering there's like, what, five of these wings? And how much of this has been specific to me? Uh, there, must, there must be quite a bit of writing they had to do to try to cover all those bases. Putting the folder aside, <coughs> he sits back and stares at you in silence. It gets so quiet that the ticking of a clock can be heard through the speakers. Kingsley sighs quietly. You were probably waiting for some boilerplate welcome speech. But I prefer to talk about real world problems. Glad to meet you. Uh, so am I. Martin nods slowly. I apologize once again for this long distance meeting. Now, as we don't have much time. Oh, the, all I'd the like fun of a Zoom point. call in a video game. I'm sure you're curious why you were taking off the bus to Magellan and brought here instead. He moves closer to the camera. I'm going to show you a short video. <laughs> Please pay attention. Wow, okay. Kingsley's face freezes on screen. I have an urgent mission for an employee of your background and qualifications. I'd have assigned someone from Magellan, but I'm short on personnel. That's why it has to be a newcomer. I apologize again for the rush, but it seems I have no choice. Martin <coughs> noisily clears his throat. <clears> throat> Maybe you've heard about Nashville Base, 
While Great preparing the materials there. for this mission, I came across a short documentary film about the complex. Ooh, I think you should watch it. A short documentary film, yes. The speakers produce a hollow click. Purple, gray, and black spots flicker on the screen. A blurred title, the Cronus Archive 1971 to 1974, was used in the production of this appears. Definitely a game for people who are patient and like to read. <laughs> This is definitely that kind of game. Now let's see, watch them. The shadow of an airplane flies across a faded yellow desert. A cheery voice fills the room. Every day, our researchers uncover more and more of the dome's secrets. There is no doubt the underground structures, so-called objects, are organized according to some pattern. Though early on, the importance of the relics to scientific research was considered insignificant. <clears throat> I guess we could do the second option. Maybe this skip some of this. You're not really interested in the movie. Instead, you eye the austere interior of the guard room, the switches on the panel, and the dusty window facing out on a well-lit storage area. Not far from the staircase, an orange tractor truck is standing amidst the shelves and containers. It must be the one from Magellan Station. Catching the word Nashville, you turn back to the screen. The speaker's voice seems to come from a distance. In November of 1973, a massive network of underground caves and a structure of hitherto unseen complexity was discovered in Sector C-12. Soon afterwards, the construction of C-12 Nashville began. Hmm. The camera glides through dim caverns as the silhouettes of bizarre mechanisms emerge. Metal structures loom up from the dark, surrounded by earth-moving machines and exhausted miners wearing orange jumpsuits. You see how much <coughs> easier it is just to write this out <laughs> than to try to animate it with models and... You know, a cutscene. The speaker continues. C-12 Nashville is an Can innovative research I mean, complex I read this located to watch the primary relic mining location. The complexity of this object is unique. Communications. <laughs> the film abruptly cuts out and Kingsley's face reappears. The rest of this information is classified. Hopefully you get the main idea. Nashville is a Go very special place requiring people with both special qualifications and special clearance level, though yours will do for your task. Martin adjusts his glasses. So, the task. Find the guitar. Nashville Bay stopped the transmitting devil. and receiving signals yesterday evening. A reconnaissance group was sent out earlier today, but we haven't heard anything from them yet either. A little creepy. The chief officer rubs his forehead. Normally, I would never give this task to a newcomer like yourself. But I just don't have enough people. He looks down at the documents again. Furthermore, the group was lacking someone with your specialization. I decided that a visit to an established base like Nashville didn't require an armed escort. That may have been a big mistake. Kingsley is looking into the camera once more. Your task is to get to Nashville, figure out whatever's behind the communication problem, get in touch with the group, and work with them to solve the problem. The chief officer carefully returns the documents to the folder. You notice his hands tremble slightly. Go downstairs. The truck must be waiting for you in storage. This task is urgent, but a small delay is acceptable if there's anything you need to settle here first. That is all. Kingsley's hand reaches toward the... Traveling. Prepare yourself to leave the base's defensive perimeter. Blah, 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 check, blah, blah, blah. And in your game, you'll be able to acquire your own vehicles. Hmm. And give you unprecedented freedom of movement. Okay, I'm going to start another file here. Mana Bay. There we go. Okay, getting a vehicle. What do we have here? Which one? Having a bad day? Squabble with the wife? Scratched up the paint Did on you your put car? Her moon car? <laughs> Why do you hate me so much? Uh, what quest completed. Uh, let's save the drama. Where's the car? 
What do you want? I'm all ears. You being sent on the road to Nashville? Papers continue. Dome storm is not for nothing. Have a good one. Wait, there are storms under the dome? How does that work? I'm all ears. Bye bye. Jeez, oh, did I miss something? Ah, okay. Story. Trick must be waiting for you in storage. Where is the truck? Is that the truck? The truck is covered with desert dust. Its engine is burning hot. When you put your hand on the cockpit, an almost imperceptible noise like the rustle of the ocean fills your head. Okay. <laughs> uh, I hope to see you again soon. Why? <clears throat> is that not the truck? Maybe that's not the right truck. Well, this is the one. The young woman is sitting sideways in the driver's seat, legs hanging out. <coughs> Greetings. You're the novice going to Nashville, right? What's your name? Mind if I smoke in the car? No, oh, these Bulgarians. Nor Clara. Uh, no, I'm going to do that. Let's introduce yourself. There we go. Glad to meet you. In the funicular? I've got nuts. <laughs> you want some? Or candy? I've got chocolate covered fruit. Climb into the cabin and plunk yourself down. Lean back in your chair. The roads are bad. Very little asphalt, dirt tracks mostly. God willing, we'll get there before that storm hits. Like music, blues, gospel. You know, I don't know where you where you live, but you know, if you live somewhere with good roads, you should be very thankful. Have a good As I do not <laughs> a place with good roads. <laughs> Something about snow and ice, you know, it's not good for roads. We tend to get lots and lots of potholes by the time they uh, finally get around to fixing them. It's already winter again. <laughs> the highway leading to C-12 Nashville is blocked by an anomalous storm, and you're forced to detour over a mountain pass. Soon, the radiator boils over, and you have to stop. It seems like a really good opportunity for some combat. Clara lifts up the hood and thoroughly examines the steaming radiator. The engine's boiling, so we'll have to wait. You do know what happens when a car boils, right? It's... The blue shuts her mouth abruptly and stares anxiously at the dark funnel cloud dancing on the horizon. Now that you're on higher ground, it's clear that the storm has overtaken a fairly large section of road. It will be difficult to... The blue looks at the engine again. We wait. As soon as it cools down, we'll go... This storm worries me more, but it's not an insurmountable problem. I heard there are some relics at the local gas station that protect against anomalies. You could even accidentally step on one out here, they say. Mysterious are the ways of the Lord. Let's get out of the storms. Ah, I guess we're going to the gas station. Oh, good looking levels, too. Nice three dimensionality. Oh, yeah. I wonder if some of the levels have fog of war. There's the gas station, I assume. There we go. There's a lot of setup, a lot of build up here. 
Who the hell goes there? Come on in. Oh, Since rabbit. you're already here. We're ready to get down and dirty you some A combat. weird, scruffy old man. Beard is sitting in front of the checkout terminal. The badge on his blue jumpsuit is long since bleached away. <laughs> With a groan, he picks up a magnifying glass and peering through it begins poking at the key. The computer plays a short tune. Checkmate, the system declares. The old man angrily sets the magnifying glass aside. A grandmaster? You're a piece of junk, not a grandmaster. <laughs> and a cheater to boot. He raises his head to squint in your direction. Eh? What do you want? I don't advise eating here and there's nothing to buy. And either way, we're closed. The shopkeeper rises from his seat. And you notice he's sporting a peg where his left leg should be. Pretty good voice acting. Alright, what do we need to do here? Truck broke down. The old man throws up his hands with a scowl. Then go fix it. Melville reluctantly points a crooked finger at the front door. Go out there and walk over to the gas station. Go down to the basement. There's an anomaly, a tree. It's glowing. And there are some golden thingies hanging off it. We make special devices from that fruit called... After a little digging, he pulls out a little key on a shoelace. Only take the device, you hear? Ten experience just for that. Okay, so we gotta go to the gas station. Uh, this looks like a... No, that doesn't look like a... It's a vending machine. Where is this gas station? It didn't sound like it was far away. Well, I don't know. Is this the gas station? I don't see any pumps. Something about a basement. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. It's a dead end job. Uh, basement. Is that what that is? Something's going on over here. What is that? It doesn't seem to be doing anything. I guess so. Don't walk, toss the boat. Okay, now what? I don't think I'm supposed to be up here, but oh well. Ooh, what's this? Princess. Heavy weapon. Tactical rifle. Oh, that's okay. What's all this other stuff? Is that toolbox? Oh, I think that's under. I think that's not. Oh, God, come back! Much of this stuff I'm supposed to be taken. Glad everything. to meet you. Travis Explosive Ordnance Disposal. I hope to see you again. Is soon. this the gas station? No, I took some damage from that. Stupid. I'm gonna have to get used to these this idea of the bolts. You got a timer. Ooh, potato! I yeah, still haven't seen how you craft things. There must be a uh, crafting system. Some fuel. 30 XP. Canned ham. I get experience points just for searching. Okay, maybe if I eat the food, it'll uh, bring some health back. A heartburn for 600 turns. Well, let's go ahead and eat it. Let's see. 
He did. Alright, that healed me up. Fatty food. I like fatty food. Fatty, salty, bad for your food. That's my kind of food. Twinkies and spam. Uh, pipe wrench. Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm just going to collect everything. Big box. Piece of cloth, some air gun powerlets. Sure. Yeah, chemistry workbench. Can make some contraceptions or. Wait. Huh? Well, these are categories. Okay. So, what do I need? Can I, I can't make this for some reason. These recipes. Sterile bandages. Okay, I need to find some. Plastics. Man, I like I'm loving this XP just for searching. That's kinda like a seven seven days to die. One of my favorites. Okay, let's try to lockpick this. So I like that it just is a dice roll instead of the old uh, some kind of mini game type deal. Sometimes those are okay, but a lot of times it just gets old after like the 500th time. Okay, we're going to the basement. I don't know if that's loaded or not, but let's just make sure it's good to go. Okay, there's better be some combat. Ooh. For some reason, I'm having trouble with the old X split today. The green screen doesn't seem to want to work. You still notice every now and then some like weird stuff going on in the corners. I'm trying to keep an eye on that. I know you guys probably don't care, but still. I like to make a nice, professional looking video. Ooh, what's oh, there's a military kit. Just trying to keep this guy from stepping in that goo. Let's see. I've got. Uh, oh, I got lots of. I carry lots more stuff. How many of these bolts do I have? Does have one? No. How many do I have? This requires bolt sixteen. Does that mean I need sixteen bolts? That ain't gonna last. Oh, don't step in it! Jeez! There. Oh, it doesn't seem to matter if I throw the bolt or not, he still steps in it. Must be some trick to that. What is this? Comic book issue. Tech plus 20 temporarily. Alright, just a little temporary boost, I suppose. Still could be. I like that it tells you that stuff is empty. Alright, what's the deal with this? These bolts. Do I have some way to, like, carefully navigate? I have to get both of them. Ah, see, just he went right into it. What is that thing? Is that a bad guy? Oh boy. I probably shouldn't be standing right next to a barrel. Give him a long burst. He's still coming. And he ain't no hologram. Let's try the burst shot. That'll take him out. I got him. 
Doesn't have anything on him. Okay, what's this business? I need to heal myself somehow. And I gotta try to figure out how to keep from getting hit by those stupid things. I don't have that many bolts left. Let's see, dig, force, pickpocketing, what? Does the stealth mode help you to avoid... Uh, I thought I saw... Am I radiated? Fixer... Energy resistance, dismantling... Hm. Well, weapons, armor, ammo, food, drinks, and stimulators... Medical equipment... Sterile bandages... Bandage stops bleeding... Rad force radiation treatment... And Perjuron. Sounds pleasant. Uh, do I have any effects on me? <clears throat> now what's this little plus made? Looks like a sh Oh, I can... Oh, okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do something. Heavy weapons, and why don't we do a little bit of less likely to step into a bear trap. Well, probably wouldn't hurt to have some of that. Go ahead and do a point in that, but I usually like to go where there's already some points. So it maxes, it looks like it maxes out at 150. And what's this stuff? Why does it say 60? 30. Combat. What does it mean? Oh, I see. So I get all these abilities now that I have. I get the 120, I get some more stuff. It says a, it's a little plus. Alright, save the changes. Oh, I guess that just means I haven't saved my changes yet. Okay, I think that's all I can do. Right? Is there more stuff? Inventory. I forgot what I was originally trying to do. Uh, inventory. Move character up. Fatty food. I don't think I got any conditions on me. I just need to heal. So maybe I should just eat some more food. Where's my food? Try the potato. Far better boiled or fried in oil. And yeah, I just eat another can. Okay. Now my question is this. Can I like just carefully move around? Or am I, do I need to use those bolts? Because I've only got 13 left, unless I can figure out how to craft some more. Uh, is there a craft window? Yeah, let's take a look at this. Mechanical repair kit. I don't see bolts. Maybe you just find the bolts. Uh, oh, that's right. How can I? Is there a way I can tell what this stuff is? Pickpocketing, dig. I never did find a shovel. Ah, see, so just stands right in it. Damn it! Okay, I don't know what the what the deal is with that. Don't go in it. Stay put. So what's the point of this if you're still going to get affected by it anyway? It doesn't make any sense. Software. Anomaly protector. Quest item. Alright, that's what I needed. I'm going to get two of them. Can I use it on myself? 
I need it if I'm gonna get out of here without dying. There we go. What does it do? Uh, scan? No. Overview. Resume function. Energy transformation. Okay, I don't know. Maybe they'll tell me some more. Codex updated. What's this about a codex? Oh my god. Codex. Um, codex. First class relic. Oh, neat. Limits abnormal radiation across a wide spectrum. Upon contact with the relic, subjects exhibit increased agility. Does that just automatically click on, or do I have to activate it? Let's see. No, I'm still taking damage. I'm a bolt. Requires bolts. Force. No. Pocketing. Dismantling. Use on. Okay, this is interesting. Energy resistance. Maybe I have to activate this on myself. And then I can run through this stuff. No, I'm still taking <laughs> lots of damage. Okay. Yay, I'm gonna die! Yikes! Toxic corrosion. Alright, there is clearly some stuff I don't know what I'm... I've got a lot to learn. Because I just don't know how to get through these things without taking damage. It seems like throwing the bolts ought to, like, let you walk past it if you go quickly, but I don't know if it's just user error here, or you have to be extremely precise, or whatever, but it is not worrying. Yeah, what's this ventilation shaft? Gained 49 XP. Oh, I guess that was just a way around that. Well, that would have been handy. Uh, a couple hundred health points of Ladder. I think we got the apples. Maybe you just have to take some damage walking through stuff, even if you... Maybe the bolts just kind of reduce some of the damage. Hatch, I think I've got everything. Since there's a metal locker. Oh, there's some more bolts. That's good. It's a toolbox. Simple rock pick. Excellent. Anything else? Your personal box. Why do I have a personal box? Is that like a permanent storage? As you exit the shed, you stumble across a scene from a movie. A dented Jupiter moon parked by the roadside shop with four strangely dressed tramps idling about. Uh, do I need to do something? People standing around the car are so filthy, you barely recognize their Cronus uniforms. You're facing oranges. I don't want to do anything to them. The car is in awful shape. Car is obviously stolen. I guess I have to call them for some reason. You quietly call out and the bandits turn to you. One of them must be the leader takes a step in your direction. Well, 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 who's this in a nice clean uniform? Make up your mind, game. You say I need to wash it, now you say it's nice and clean. He grins nastily. So here's the deal. Get us to you and that old codger behind the counter, you're both going to chip in for our gas. And maybe I won't stress test your skull today. Ask for 20 minutes to cinch the deal. Say that you're ready to chip in. Answer that you got a better idea. Well, come on, let's hear your better idea. 
char answer. You're gonna stress test those skulls yourself. I like that answer. Wanna dance? Okay then, put your ballet slippers on. Alright, finally swung. This looks like a decent battle here. Let's see, didn't I pick up a better... Okay, these are both heavy weapons. They're both worth 200. Looks like this princess does more mechanical damage. Is it better or worse? How's it designed to kind of set up? Uh, as far as I can tell, I mean, it looks like it's uh, not the same. All else considered, right? Mechanical damage. So I can do 20 to 21 points of mechanical damage or 17 to 21 points of heat damage. Uh, let's just stick with the, what I got for now. Is this armor? Oh, I guess you got a relic slot. Alright, what does that do? Nothing? I can't tell that that does anything. Encumbrance plus five. Is encumbrance a good thing? Precision. Negligible. Alright, you got me on that. Uh, let's see. What, where do we want to go? Probably here. Is there a way to see where my line of sight is going to be? Oh, I should have done that. That was too far. Durr! Oh, man. How many people are fighting me here? Let's see. We hold the shift key down. I'll speed things up. What's wrong with you, huh? Huh? I don't think they're all fighting me. Oh, I guess the guy... He's on my side, I think. That's good. Okay, I can take him out. Good, good, good. Kind of low on health. I might need to pop a... Not an anti... Not that. Uh, I need a... I'm able to penetrate... Structural damage restore the integrity of machines. No. Um, yeah, I could probably survive another round anyway. Not enough action points. Let's just I'll poke you in the eye with my shield. This out. You know, I hope they give us more combat. That's it. Cause it's uh, grass. Need to reload. Yeah, that's where everything starts to come to it starts to shine. Stop it. The game engine, all these it's complex mechanics. I'll smack I know they're proud up. of their writing, but still. A little bit of writing, some combat, a little bit. You know, kind of switch it back and forth. That's the way to go. You don't want too much combat or too much reading. This is a bad guy, correct? How do we tell which ones are allies? Yeah. Pretty sure this guy was shooting at me. Ow. I hope he wasn't a good guy. <laughs> He's a bad guy now. Size shot. He's using his gloves. You're dead, asshole. Yeah, there was some cursing. So it's, it's PG rated at this point. You even I'll show them. dead. Now he's got a red circle under him, so I'm going to assume that means bad guy. Uh. Oh. 
<laughs> nice bloody effects. It's kind of burning. I set fire to him somehow. Oh, I guess that's it for that battle. That went so bad. You know, I want to try smoking one of these six. How do we do that? Um, what about, um, consume. Uh, weird. What's he doing? Why is he standing like that? <laughs> Sometimes it's best not to ask too many questions. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, got some nice boots. It looks like I got an upgrade on my boots, my footwear. Oh, these are volunteer workers' boots. The manufacturer replaced the zipper with buttons and equipped these cheap leatherette boots with a rigid, almost non bending sole. Okay, now can I. Yeah, we've got strip as an option. Let's just see what this does. Uh, something happened. I think it broke it down into some scraps for me. Probably for use with the crafting system. What do I have to do to unlock these belts? I think that's what this is. I'm still not sure if this is something I have to activate or what's the deal. These belt items gave me five pieces of cloth. I probably should have just sold those boots. What is that beta mine? Drugs. Cut my drugs. Well, you seem like a better sword oh, than the Manny others. Putney Thanks for the help. Huh. It's a oh. dick. With his gang problems solved, Melville is visibly more hospitable. I'm sorry for bitching at you, sweetheart. My mood hasn't been great this last couple of weeks. Would you like some coffee? Because I could do uh... The old man takes off his plastic leg and wraps it on the counter. Hey, anybody want some coffee? Coffee, come on. Coffee! The old man scrubs his bald spot. <sighs> That'll be my stand-in, I think. And here I reckon he'd gone and quit on me. It smelled a stench from the cellar. Thought a rat croaked down there. Speaking of rats. Listening to your story, he shakes his head in amazement. You say it didn't even look like a person? Oh, I had a bad feeling about this place from the start. Not good at all, I'm telling you. Okay. Hey, sweetheart. Wait a minute. Oh. He looks a bit confused. I was just, uh, Picnics. I was thinking, I wanted to thank you. Maybe we could go on a picnic. You like picnics, don't you? On the roadside? Aaron smiles. His expression is both silly and sincere. Look, there's a cliff nearby. Lovely place. I got a cook pot already there. A comfy piece of tarpaulin, too. And the law. <laughs> a lot. Comfy piece of tarpaulin. Even got a little bottle stashed away. Is, I can't tell. Is this like a date? Uh. Melville grunts, reaches under the counter, and pulls out a bulky bag smelling of onions. The old man lays out the bag's contents on the counter canned pork, onions, eggs and potatoes he looks quite proud of his stash what's a picnic without snacks here i'm gonna teach you here's a great recipe snack it's an onion pork. first you have to boil the eggs and then gesturing excitedly the old man reveals the secrets of melville this is how you learn to cook cuisine. i'd cook it myself but i'm sure you could do better uh, see the stove over behind me here's the key go ahead and cook so, I'll go ahead and try this. Craft something. So it looks like you need to. Sometimes you have to have a station to craft at. Cockroach! Fried cockroach egg! Oh, 
Yeah. Canned ham. Pulled pork. Okay, let's just do it that way. Not do anything. Pulled pork, item received. Now well, I might as well steal everything. Hope he doesn't. <laughs> Hope it's not one of those games where he's like, <laughs> so. Using thirst quenched. That's the basement. Shenander's gear. What is that? Mop? I don't know if I need a mop. I guess I can strip it. Use this mop. Next quest, take that mop. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, those have red, so I'm gonna assume that means he'll get pissed off. Aaron stares into his screen and mutters to himself. He notices you. Ah! Squinting skeptically, Aaron, he lowers his voice. There's that guy with a rock, the white by the swamp, and those two hippies. Ask them if they want to sit with us, too. Okay, we're going to have to see where this picnic business leads us. Maybe that'll be a decent stopping point. Good intro, I think. I'm still tweaking out. Just gets... Glad to meet you. The dome, very well. So they're talking about the dome. Peace be upon you. My name is Rabindranath Krishnaswamy. Sister Swallow's eyes remind you of twin forefather anomalies. Uh, look more closely at the twosome. Swallow rubs her cheek against the table's surface. What? Rubs your cheek against the table's surface? These two have taken enough drugs to knock out an entire black wing, black wing squadron. Guess what you're thinking? They give you a tricksy smile. Uh, consciousness doesn't widen itself. You have to help along. Uh, I'm not. Let's just back away. Do we want to invite them to the picnic? Oh, sure. Yes, we'd love to come. More the merrier, right? We get to search the trash. Cracked baseball bat. Search the trash. Empty beer bottle. Is there a category here for junk? Tin can. Uh, is it like I can scrap it? Tools, ammo, all the quest items. Should be able to. No, I can't strip it for some reason. Stuff you can't strip. Okay. Should I invite the dead guy to the picnic? Something about who else is here? Oh, there. Yeah, this guy over here. Maybe I should invite Travis. It's a good name, Travis. I like the name Travis. Hiya. Invite him to the picnic. See ya. Guessing things are going to start picking up after this picnic. That's one reason I want to get to it. Hey, look, there's a gunsmithing workshop. Some boxes. You know, I could just do this all day, just looting boxes and stuff. It's 
Oh, it's relaxing. It's fun. Ooh, there's a shovel. Yes. Digging. Yeah. I've got a shovel. Okay, can make. Could make some bullets, looks like. But looks like I don't quite have the. Looks like I could make. Looks like I could make this, right? Oh, I don't have enough gunsmithing. Okay, how do I get more of that? Where's your skills applied? Oh, I guess you, uh, I don't see gunsmithing here, though. Um, well, there it is. It's tech. Okay, and I'll put more points in. Oh, I think... Yeah. <laughs> I guess you get so many points every time. And you have to split them up, split them up amongst your weapon and... Uh, combat, or uh, combat ones and applied ones, I get it. Some games have separate points. That's okay. I'm sure I'll get another level here eventually. Alright, I saw a guy. Yeah, who's this? Theodore McCready. Salutations. Extend your greet him with a nod. <laughs> he responds with a slight bow. Ask him if you'd like to go on a picnic. Sure, why not? So there's quite a bit of things we could talk to him about. Gesture particles dart up to form a nimbus around his head, then quickly subside. Nashville, of course I know. Listen, you're damn lucky. Nashville's a real treasure trove. It's a huge excavation topped by a three-level complex. I want to hear what you think when you get back. Just a joke. Nothing will happen to you. Ask him what he's doing here. I'm from Magellan Station. Two weeks ago, management sent me to conduct a field study. Now here to confirm and refute the hypothesis. Unfortunately, I can't establish that this is due to the presence of Mobius or something else. Uh, bye bye. Information. Oh, I can scan the stone. Neat. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like this sci-fi angle to this game. I think they're doing more with it. Nuts. It has a different feel to it than the standard CRPG or even a game like Fallout. This is it kind of reminds me a little bit maybe of a Torment. Now there's a lot of mysterious things in that game to read about kind of a, probably as much exploration and just weirdness <laughs> than anything else okay is that everybody what about the lady with the truck here's our truck whoa it's a big level i was just gonna say these are big honking levels Where's my dude? Whoa, trap. Where's this trap? Where is it? Uh, where is the trap? Is it in the tr trash? What? Trap discovered. Okay, is there... I'm gonna save it. 
mine clearance. Insufficient score. Required 10. Okay, so I don't want to mess with that. Ooh, a pile of stones. What are these sparkly things? Any questions? Wait a minute, locked? A pile of stones is locked? Force them apart, maybe. Let's see, who was this? Ordinary backpack. None of the extras. How does that work? Do we equip it? Yeah. There we go. Sweet. Okay, what's the release? Is that just something that's gonna kill me? Necessarily want to waste my. Oh, I guess it's just if you want to get down here, you have to work your way through those. I don't know. Get down to the truck and then talk to our driver. Oh man, radiation, great! <laughs> Shouldn't have come that way. Clara briefly looks up from poking around the engine. A vague smile appears on the blue's face. Really? You open the hood. Clara sets up the device between the cylinder. Nothing happens at first. But then the small sphere clicks and a network of thin crap. You exchange glances with Clara. The blue crosses herself silently. She gently touches the relic and forcefully slams the hood. Sitting behind the wheel, Clara nods to you, inviting you to get into the cab. Done. Let's go. See whether this gizmo really helps against the storm. Yes. After a moment's consideration, picnic. she agrees. Sure. Okay. Ready for a picnic. Now, now I kind of want to go on a picnic in real life. I haven't been on a picnic in... I don't even remember going, ever going on a picnic. <laughs> okay, let's go up and that tarp line, tarp poly. How do you say that tarp? I always just say tarp. I've never actually heard anybody pronounce the whole word. Tarpaulin, 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 tarpaulin. I don't know. Tarpaulin. <laughs> tarp. Ah, Melville leads you to the cliff, carrying a battered old hamper with some chipped plates inside. The cunning smile takes out a dusty bottle of scotch. You stoke the coals of the expiring campfire and the flames reluctantly blaze up. So you examine the plates, look closely at the bottle, they're finished lighting the fire. You sit down and stretch your legs towards the fire. The sun peeks lazily out from behind the clouds. Even the distant howling of the storm seems to have calmed a bit. Travis Brightman takes out a collapsible cup and silently hands it to Melville. Black, black relic dust sparkles greasily on his fingers. Aaron mumbles and jokes with the others while setting up plates around the campfire. Hey, sweetheart, you just going to be sitting there or what? Get that pork out. <laughs> Pull out the pulled pork. Serve up the pulled pork. Got to give it to Melville's family recipe, the pulled pork. You know, it's funny. I just had pulled pork. I had a pulled pork burger. That's what I had for lunch today. That's quite yummy. You might think that's excessive to have a big honking hamburger. Big piece of beef. Must have been at least a, about a half pound of beef on that thing. Pork on top of that. I think it even had a couple slices of bacon on it. Yeah. And I liked it. It had cheese. <laughs> I think it's called the Gambler's Burger. At least you're gambling with your whether you're gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> oh, I don't. You know, you don't eat like that every day, but you know, you treat yourself every now and then, right? 
And Morgan accepts the plate from the old man with a bow. Sitting on the grass, she leans on the boulder, closes her eyes, and recites her prayer. You're sitting on a log, gazing out on the haste desert, and scarfing down pork. This <laughs> sounds poetic. With half an ear, you listen to what's happening around the campfire. Melville sips whiskey from a tumbler and takes a walk down a memory lane. Down a memory lane. Specific one. Mardell Plant, the 1949 lovely little town. Hee <laughs> hee. You could wear your slippers right through February. New hotel, fabulous fishing, and off for free. But they didn't let me compete in the tournament. I failed to qualify, they said. The old man is mumbling and twirling his glass in one hand. It <laughs> just keeps silent. Don't encourage him. The pork platter is nearly empty. The picnic is coming to an end. Melville limps to the edge of the cliff and spits over the edge. Yeah, that was a nice little sit down, all right. Ash one back washes the dishes. Hee <laughs> hey, hee. Don't you all jump up at once? All right, I'll wash it myself. The old man's coffee is terrible. Uh huh. And so is his temper. Is that it? Yeah, we could boil an egg. Yeah, might as well do both. Got me some boiled eggs. Got some experience points. What's that? Oh, we're doing here? I guess that was... That was just a thing. Be some big, big plot development. Make sure the guy doesn't go through the thing. I feel like we need to have at least one more combat. You know, I still feel like we're just too early in the game to do a good review. You know, go a little bit further. You know, I gotta say, at first I was like, man, so much to read. Lara shuts down the hood. But it's, it's starting to get me, you know. It's, it's, I like the it's starting to really warm up to the writing style. So, you know, are we going? I do enjoy sitting down with a good novel. Just sometimes I don't like to do too much reading when I'm playing a game. You know, I want to be doing stuff. If I want to read, I'll read the novel, right? But you know, sometimes it's done so well. You just kind of overlook it. You kind of into the story. I like the vibe here. It's kind of like a. It, it sort of reminds me a little bit of Torment, with uh, you know, if you took Torment, combined it with Wasteland, or at least uh, Wasteland two and three, I think you kind of get something like this. And our, the Fallout stuff, I, you know, I guess it's there too. It seems like a little bit less than those other two options. So. Okay, let's just see. I think we can continue on our way. Smashville Facility Parking Lot. Oh, I'm in Nashville. I've been to Nashville a couple of times. Vacations. You know, a lot of people As think you approach country Nashville, music. The realization hits you that something is definitely wrong. The boom at the security checkpoint is up. And the turret indicators are glowing red. Black smoke rises over the parking lot. Yeah, now something's gonna happen. The automatic guns beep and direct their gun barrels at your vehicle. You and Morgan exchange concerned looks. Where to her to step on the accelerator and reach the entrance? Deathproof 30, yank the wheel and batter your way through one of the turrets. Yeah, I like that option. This attempt is unsuccessful. Uh -oh. The tow truck spins out of control and crashes into the security booth. A burst of bullets from the turret pierces the vehicle, covering you with shattered oh, glass. She got, she got hurt. The blue tumbles out of the open driver's side door with a grunt, and you follow her. I just don't like this, the blue, the orange. Sitting beside the truck track, you lift your head to see Nashville ablaze. Black smoke billowing overhead and intertwining with the maelstrom above the station. It whirls slowly and majestically 
hundreds of tiny green lightning bolts flashing silently in the epicenter. <laughs> this is narrator. <laughs> silently in the epicenter. There's the Dutch on the left hand side. Clara lifts her eyes to the sky, mesmerized by the whirlpool of clouds. Yeah, we need man. to scout the surroundings. You nod in agreement. Morgan is right. It's time you figured out what happened here. Accident victim. Oh no! How do I help her? You bend over Clara where she lies behind the bullet ridden truck. Her face is spattered with blood. Oh! She grabs your hand. Don't let her die! Repeat after me. Depart, O Christian soul, out of this world in the name of God. What's going on here? Don't let her die now. I don't have long. She's like spouting uh, Bible verses or something. Only her chest heaving abruptly above under the blood soaked jacket shows that she's alive. Oh, what can I do? Can I heal her? Don't sh sh I don't want to shoot her. Don't pickpocket her. Give a. Oh no, what? Accident victim. Let's see, examine. Suffers from bleeding. A bandage. Oh, I got a bandage. Hang on, I got a bandage. Yeah, no, piece of cloth. Stack it. I got a band. Didn't I make some bandages? Am I just imagining that? Let's see, medical. Oh, there we go. Bandages. Okay. Use on her. Bandaged. <laughs> Man, thank God. I thought she was dying. Okay, she looks better now. Okay, Morgan. You've been sent here by angels. I'd swear I'd, I'd swear to it on anything. Anything. Tell her a simple thanks is more than enough. Yeah. Her eyes welling with gratitude. Thank you. <laughs> although, although I think I got him responsible since I literally grabbed the wheel from her and wrecked the truck. The turrets are aimed at us. If we run, we're as good as dead. What do we do? <laughs> ah, this is now see this is it's getting good. Like, I don't know which of these options to pick. Each one kind of has some interesting uh you know, you don't really know. I mean, each one, it's, it's an interesting choice. It's one of those interesting decisions, you know, that the, you know, was that Chris Crawford or, uh, was he the one that came up with that or was it a, oh, the Civ guy, Will something, Will Wright, you know, one of those guys. I suggest you wait there while, you're, while you handle the turrets and get help. Oh, yeah, let's do that one. Oh, breaking a good impression on Morgan. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what to do. Something about a turret. Um, I'm kind of bad off myself. Is there a way I could... Maybe I should use one of those bandages on myself. Not really... It says it st stops bleeding, but I don't know if that's... No, it doesn't really look like it does anything for your hit points. I need just need to get some hit points. I think it's, you just eat food to do that. Flatulence? What? Uh, did that heal me? Healing. Oh, I get to level again. Okay, this time let's do some of these applied options. Let's see, medicine maybe? First aid. I could probably use that. I... Why don't we... You gotta get 30 points in it before you get these. Is that the deal? I've only got 14 points. If I get 30 points, I can do these. with your feet, passive ability. 
lock picking, pickpocketing. Well, uh, what about survival? I need to get 60 points to get these items. You know, maybe I'm going to get an NPC or side henchman or something here that would have some of these other skills. I don't know yet. I don't think I could get 30 even if I put all the points in there. Nope. And I don't know if you get anything unless you bump it to 30. Does it just give you a little bonus just for every point, or is it one of those things where you have to hit the tier to get any benefit? So I'll tell you what, let's just, operating on that assumption, let's just put a few points into the ones that are already pretty high up. Yeah, see, 120 to get this row. Or I can try. I'm done pretty well with the heavy weapons so far. I feel like we got so many points though. Maybe I should just spend them all in these categories. Yeah, let's do that. I'll go ahead and try to get these up a little bit closer. Precision. Innocent looks, passive ability. Survival. Yeah, these look good. Let's put a few points in that. Got one point left. Let's put it in tech. Okay, then I got a new perk. Also, it does have just straight perks. That's good. Adrenaline, deafness plus two, close quarters damage. You know, see, it's all these little details like this that make the game fun to play. Because there's lots of fun options. They're all good. They're all going to make subtle changes to the way you play. Brace for impact. It'd take me a long time to go through them all, so I'm just going to pick one relatively quickly here. That gives you plus seven initiative. That's almost always a good thing. Plus, it's using my muscles, which I pumped up. You know, I probably don't need to go any further than that. I think having that bonus to the initiative is just going to be great. I always find in these kinds of games that you, it's hard to go wrong having a high initiative and going first. That can definitely make a difference. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Let's try the stealth mode out. And see what I need to do. I just shoot the turret. Is there like a energy station? Yeah, that's probably that. That's probably the trick. Door to guard post. Can I pick it? Lock picking, yeah. Oh, I need to take a closer look at that choice next time. Maybe I don't even need to use a lockpick if your score is high enough. Okay, what do we have here? Military grade. Okay, that's good. Mission box. Excellent. Not sure what those computer disks are for. I guess we'll find out eventually. Okay, weapon power cell. Air gun powerless. Now this computer, this is probably going to use some type of science skill. Access denied. Try to hack it. Nope. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. Use terminal. Oh. What is this? Blackwing employee. I gotta, this game is definitely picking up. You know, sometimes it takes the game a little while to really start to get going. This one definitely, I think, has some... It's kind of a slow start, but I can already start to feel it working on me now. It's getting its hooks into me. <laughs> it's making me want to just keep playing. 
You know, this is going to be one of those. Yes, I'll come to bed. Just one more turn. One more turn. You know, I like, you know, that's, that's fine. I prefer that. Some games will look great, you know, everything is great at the beginning. And then you just kind of get bored. You know, that it's all kind of superficially fun, you know, but it doesn't have the depth. You got nothing! There's probably a skill or a perk or something like that that... <gasps> yeah! <laughs> this is just too good to be true! <laughs> oh, and to think I was, I was going to quit! I was just about to quit the game! Oh my god, look at those guys. <laughs> oh yes, let's go. Oh. Savor the moment. Savor it. Okay, I'm gonna... Do I want to sneak up on these guys? What do oh, I want to do with them? Oh, it's a huge rat. Oh, look at them. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, I was... I can't believe I was, like, this close to saying, okay, I played it enough. <laughs> and, you know... This, I had this feeling. I had a feeling. Like, no, Matt, just just give it a few more minutes. You know, just 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 wait. <laughs> Incredibly evasive pack hunting. Oh yeah, they thought about rats. You know, this is the thing. Rats are quick, man. You see a rat. I mean, it's, it's like the reason they're scary. You, you see in movies, and like they'll jump up on the table, jump up on a chair. It's because they move so fast it's like supernaturally fast it just freaks you out like nothing should be moving that fast you know it's just got if you've never seen if you've never been in a room with one you might not know what i'm talking about it's like that speed is just what makes you go uh, i don't care how brave you are you know you're gonna be oh whoa. okay ah man i just I just kind of want to admire these guys for Ooh, this one. There's different kinds of rats. Look at this. Look, he's ravenous. Okay, then he's it's just your regular rat. And you got your huge rat. Okay, how do we want to do this? How do we want to do this? Um, let's go ahead and stealth. Make sure we're fully loaded. Yep. <laughs> Get the machine gun rats. <laughs> Okay, now there must be some way I could just take the shot, right? Can I just do this? Let's see, burst shot, long burst. This is using up lots of ammo, is it worth it? Let's see, do I need to do that? Can I do that? No, oh, I need to go the full. Oh, I got some other options here, too. Oh, I see what they did, right? Butt stroke. Wait a minute. 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 Okay, so that's a heavy weapon. Well, how do you do these things? Why do I not have this somewhere? Active ability. Oh, it's a grenade launcher ability. Oh, I see. Duh. I see. So if I equip the tactical rifle, I would get a different set of abilities. Tracer. I don't see this tracer. Oh, I guess I do see the gotcha. Saturation fire. It's all targets in a cone. Okay, so where are those? Is that here somewhere? Yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. So if I switch the weapons around, it should give me a different set of, uh... Yeah, let's get rid of this stupid thing. Put this... Yeah, let's try that, and that should give me some... Okay, so you see how that works. Oh, this is nice. I like this. I like this. Okay. 
But I think I want to go in with a machine gun. Uh, let's see. Oh, can I get them all like this? Let's just try it. Oh, that was that was dumb. Did, what? No, that didn't. That didn't. Uh, that didn't do much damage. Still got some room. Here. Let's try the long. Try the first shot. I don't really need to. Okay. I don't think that's the way to go. Let me just run back. I think it's probably the best thing to do here. And then hopefully they don't just have unlimited movement. Yeah, there we go. Get nice and lined up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I wanted this again. Let me look at the description again. Alright. 20 to 28 damage. Fatigue. How fatigued am I? I should check that out. I'm not sure what this fatigue business is. Where I can see my fatigue score. Fatigue, fatigue. Must be a bar or something somewhere, right? It says fatigue. Uh, is that what that is? Reduced body tone. Negative effect on overall performance. Doesn't seem like it's up that high. Is it gonna tell me when I get sleepy? Is there a Go to sleep button. So that uses up fatigue for what that's worth. Not very precise. Three shots on each target and a cone. Let's try it. Oh, he's not in the firing line. So let's skip that. Gotcha. Five shots. Long burst. That uses nine? Damage 40% plus 2% muscle. Probably don't want to use up that much ammo. Let's just see what we could do with a single shot. Could almost kill him with a single shot. Of course, that's going to use uh, four action points. I got nine. Six, seven, eight. I get two of those off. Gotcha. Let's try the single shot. Squeak! <laughs> Alright, he's down. And then I think I will just try this to get a little more defense. Ah, I missed. Oh, he's trying to get around me though. Okay. Let's bump it up to first shot. That one. Oh, I missed! That would miss! I could do the butt stroke. <laughs> butt stroke! Oh, missed again. Incredibly, they're incredibly evasive. It's really just incredible. You know, I don't have a whole lot of hit points. I guess this is the default single shot. Suspect something. Yeah, you should suspect that I'm trying to kill you. Oh, it's... No, I thought I saw somewhere where it said these, you regenerate. You regenerate? Oh, rat eye. Rat foot. If properly boiled, it might almost be edible. Oh yeah. They get a rat tail. Rat tail. Now I can be like our president. I know you had a rat tail. It's a look that kind of came and went. I never had. Did you ever have a rat tail? <laughs> Did you ever have a, a mullet? I never had a mullet. Okay, I don't think I'm ready for traps. 
Okay, so is there like a camp? How do we rest? You just slowly regenerate health? I mean, how does this... So many questions. Is there a help? Settings? No. Well, I guess we could peek. Is there like good camp? <laughs> I like... You know, some of these games you like rest for a while, recuperate, you have a campfire. Some games you just automatically regenerate a certain amount of points. Uh, regeneration. Maybe that's something you have to unlock. Or a special perk or something. Hunger is one out of 1,000. Radiation, encumbrance, fatigue. Uh, stats. Healthy food. Uh, hmm. well, I guess we can just keep an eye. It's 57 right now. I feel like that's kind of bad. Craft window. No, looks like there's nothing I can craft. Well, I don't know where they would put such a such an option. There's waiting. Uh, okay, I'm just going to assume there's no camping. So let's look and see what sort of... Oh, I can remove these. Dismantling. What is that? Grease. Now let's eat our eggs. It says it has healing on it. That didn't heal for very much. What else do I have that heals? Uncooked egg. Hunger. Nasty food. <laughs> Red tail belt item. Homebrew ingredient. I don't need a bandage. You know, it's... I wish they'd be... You know, it's... It's probably spelled out very plainly somewhere. Wait. Instant regeneration. But toxic. Okay. It's really, you know, something as basic as healing. You know, you just really want that to be painfully obvious. Well, unfortunately, I think... I forgot what I was doing down here. <laughs> Oh, something about turrets, right? Trying to deactivate some turrets. Okay, so that put me over here. Why do I want to be over here? Manhole. There must be some reason I need to be over here. I sneak up on the turrets from this side, maybe? Can I use this machine? Man, it sure looks like I should be able to use this literally lifter thing and skirt along. No, don't do that! That is not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna just reload that. I don't... I'm not even gonna play that through. I do love a good, good uh, puzzle. So there must be some reason I had to fight rats to get over here. Just don't know what yet. And, uh, I don't know if I could squeeze around this car. No, he's gonna get in that he's gonna get in that line of sight, isn't he? No. Oh. Let's not do that. Let's, maybe I haven't fully explored this. Wait, wait, just hold on one minute. No, I don't see any other reason. I don't know what the Maybe they were gonna do something with that. 
ladder lifter thing and just decided not <laughs> we're just gonna not do anything with it. I could blow myself up trying to get that open. I think look, we have a map. Yeah, there we go. Ladder to main alley, ladder to freight transport parking. Oh, there's a bunch of places to get in and out here. Ladder to checkpoint. Of course, I'm already lost. I don't know how we got which one we came down. Can we come down this way? Yeah, there's the checkpoint. And that's the light vehicle's parking. There's a door. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be nice if they put some lock... <laughs> uh, trapping? So it looks like there's certain abilities and skills that use this fatigue as a... I guess that would be like mana. Hmm, what's this? A note. Secret discovered. I love secrets. After reading this note, leave in a conspicuous place. Many newcomers have joined our team and not everyone knows where the tools access cards keys are. Is ventilation shaft key, I have it. If someone is getting fired. <laughs> Oh, I can't use it now. I thought I had the key. Or maybe I have a different. Maybe I have a different key now. Well, if I. Oh, what is that? Refrigerator. What is this? Oh, some acid roaches. So I could fight them. <coughs> Refrigerant barrel. I don't want to. These guys are probably also. Oh, but look, there's a fuel barrel there. Okay, can I shoot the barrel? Boom! So maybe I can. I killed one before they even got a chance to move. See, this is what I'm saying that the having the extra initiative is often a one of the best things you can have. I'm about to wipe them out. I don't think they're going to get one hit on me. Just have to hope I don't run out of ammo. <laughs> Some of these games like to starve you for ammo. Oh, he's got a ranged attack. Oh, that's nasty. Looks like it has a debuff or a dot or something. That is nasty. Ooh, got some roach parts. Heap of roaches. Have I searched that? Access contents of the container. Okay, cockroach legs. Oof. You'd have to be pretty hungry to want to chow down on a cockroach thing, man. Is there nothing here? Nah, I guess that was just a little battle. Yes, yeah, sad when you fight some roaches. Hey, that looks important. Get in here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out how to do get this fatigue out out some sometime. Probably set it in some dialogue. And I just missed it. Cool, there's a turn. Ooh, a safe. Lockers. Ooh, what is that? Talk about Mass Effect. <laughs> Andromeda, it's a high-tech weapon. 
airplane belt item. The colors the world with fantastic lights. There's some juggies. A lot of drugs. A lot of drugs. What the heck? That looks important. And I gotta say, at this point, this game really has me by the, the tentacles. <laughs> I mean, wow, this is really getting interesting. It's really kind of getting that old Wasteland. That's one of my favorite games from recent times, is that latest. I think it's Wasteland 3 is the latest one, right? That was a great game. And this is kind of reminding me of that in all the, all the best kinds of ways. Search safe. Uh, why can't I unlock this? Insufficient ability score. Uh, I guess I need. Maybe if I had some lockpicks, I can do it. Probably won't be able to do anything with this computer now. It just needs a one. How oh, can I use this? Oh, maybe this is the workaround. Yeah, there we go. So that's what those discs are for. Okay. Greetings, Benito. Please select an option. Open the email. Open the crew safe. Let's take a look at the mail. The query executed. Emails below. The exits to the station must be masked. The door to the air shaft of the Westman sector must be locked. The key must be stored in the safe. <laughs> not in a mug, not in your pocket. Okay, email about weapons of cockroaches. Mitch. So here's a note. You can mow them down with bullets, but the flamethrowers are like fire to them. Your shells don't protect them from heat at all. Okay, good enough. Strange email. Imagining pizza delivery guys. Okay. Well, let's make sure we open the safe. Okay, so that should be just open now. Oh, flamethrower. What's this? Upgrade of high tech weapons. Wait, what was that book? Oh, please tell me there are skill books in this game. Up. Up. Allows to perform upgrade of high-tech weapons. How do I read the book? <laughs> read it! Over. I don't want to drop it, I want to read it! Ah! Does it just need to be in the inventory? No, I don't. It's not even showing up here. Oh, I don't know what. I, I didn't see any way to. Let me just double check this. And I got to figure out what to do about fatigue. I've yet to see a way to rest. Overview. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Let's see. It, it says stealth traveling. Yes. Is there anything mentioned about fatigue or resting? Not that I can see. Uh, hmm. Oh, it does a bunch more. Let's see. Traveling status. Moving. Combat. Digging. Tag skills. Trade. Anomalies. No. Statistics. No. Yeah. You know, I guess I could get on and like do a search on Steam discussions or something to find the answer. But you know, it's it's one of those things, and you know, not the sound error again. But if I can't figure it out, it's 
Probably going to be even harder for other folks. Not for you, but, you know, other folks. <laughs> you would know how to... Oh, there's a ladder to generator. I'm sure you have figured it out by now. You're probably yelling, Matt, it's the button that's right there. Can't you see it? It's right there. Ah! Maybe you just have to drink coffee or something. All right, I'm going to have to check one more place I thought about. It seems like that would be an applied thing, right? Strip, dismantle, cookery. Those are passive skills. Right. I'm not sure where that would even be. Feet. Detox. Stasis. First aid. Uh, yeah, not seeing anything about getting fatigued down. Okay, I might just have to I'm loathe to do it, but I think we're going to have to pause and I'm going to have to try to figure out what I missed. So hold on, I'll do that. Alright, so what I found, it says that I guess there's beds you find at some point. But you're just supposed to take, uh, you're supposed to have coffee you can drink. I guess food of some sort. Maybe there's a drug that helps. Grains plus two. And force, med kits. So you might just have to deal with it for a while. Looks like a lot of folks are complaining about the fatigue system. Maybe it's just something they haven't really gotten into a really good shape yet. Maybe there's some work to be done. Throw a wrench ability is required for use. Now is that just a weapon or do you need it to fix things? Check for you. Oh, I can't do anything with it. <clears throat> well, at least we get some ammo. Some rifle bullets. Okay, and I guess I can probably open this. Not picking. Yeah, that's coming in. That's coming in very useful. There's a turret right there, though. Man, it's bugging me. That you got all these machines around. I haven't saved it in a while. Yeah, it looks like I. You know, maybe you just have to fight the turrets. Can I break the generator? Smash it? Bomb it? Destroy it? Let's just see, can I find a shoot it? Wrong target, no. You can't just destroy a generator by blowing it up. Come on. Well, that's not gonna help. Okay, loading. Where have I been already? Team locker room, freight transport parking, main alley, checkpoint light vehicles parking. Okay, where am I there? Let's try freight transport parking. You know, the loading time's nice and quick, too. That's a, I never take that for granted. Wet. Well. Silver wing. Yeah, it looks like I can. Oh, no, 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 turn that back on. <laughs> oh, I have to wait. Okay. 
some reason they decided to put that on the cool now. <coughs> 20 temporary. And get some more smokes. Turn that back on. What a tease. There's another man on. Been in there? How are you supposed to get over there? <clears throat> Man, it sure would be nice if I could just. Oh, where are you going? Don't. I could just destroy that generator. Bobby, where the hell are you? Over. What the heck is that? Salute Taser. Uh, I got some pistols. Bobby, I really need your help. Over. Come Are you? Link. He is silent. See her here on security detail. Ask who's speaking, which wing she's from. I don't know. Um, try the three. Well, that wasn't the right option. <laughs> Clearly, that was somebody. I just spooked him, but... Oh, i got to remember not to just be clicking that on and off. Huh. Get on top of this building. That's probably what I should do. Don't go there. Oh, get in there. <laughs> oh, I wish they would just... Oh, there was a way to, like... You know, the Pathfinder should automatically avoid that. Unless I specify go into it. There's another box. Shift. Crowbar. Another magazine. You know, I think it would be an easy thing to program. Like, you find a magazine and it says plus 20 temporary. Why not make it so, you know, you could take the 20 temporary, or you could take plus one permanent. You know, something like that. So you just, if you wanted just to have a permanent, you take a lot fewer points. But that'd be a lot more likely to use it, because you just, otherwise you're always thinking, when would be the optimum time to use that? And you end up just never using it. Of course, they may not like that suggestion. Hey, man, why don't you make your own game? I'm working on it! And then I get sucked into something like this and spend <laughs> two, <laughs> you know, two weeks playing this. Oh, I can't get through there. Are you kidding me? Uh, there's a... Is that a turret? Yeah, there's a hatch. Alright, I need to get inside that hatch. Okay. This is a well done level here. You know, it would be fun if the developers watched this and there's a guy like, Oh, that's the level I did! He said he likes my level. He hates all the other levels, but he liked my level. Shut up! Boris. I think it's a Boris that designed this level. <clears throat> it's Igor, Matt, not Boris. Strange man, this Barton. Thank you. Alright, I just want to find and figure out which one of these is the right one? <laughs> oh man, I am just my sense of direction. It looked like a parking lot to me. Maybe it's this one. Oh, it's too bad I can't just click on it. Uh, we can find it this way, I suppose. 
Okay, let's try that. Let's see if that's the right one. You know, on a positive note, it, it loads up so fast. I'm not really paranoid about clicking on the wrong one because you know it's not. That's huge. I mean, those games where you have you know, all this clunky stuff every time you just want to go inside a hut. <laughs> Like, I don't even want to go in that house. It's going to take like 10 minutes to load and then come back out. It's still not the one I'm looking for. Where is it? Let's see. It's a truck. I don't see any reason to... It looks like there's something here. Maybe it's worth the investigating that. Another manhole. Looks like there's some, yeah, there's some boxes here. Okay. Some energy cells. Kind of curious about those energy weapons. A lot of fun with those in Fallout. I tend to be old-fashioned. You know, give me a, a boomstick. Give me a rifle. Rifle and a pistol. That's pretty good. Pretty good setup. Alright, where am I? I have a main alley, pair team. Okay. Let's try the. Oh no, it's uh I need a compass. Right, that's the main alley. Let's see where that is. I don't see any reason to even be here. Oh, there's an employee over there. Ooh, there's a plumbing crew closet key card. Another magazine. <coughs> well, that was. We need that key card for something, I'm sure. Or did we pick the lock on the closet? <laughs> Maybe it's redundant now. Huge rat ladder to main alley. Nothing else we need to here, all right? I feel like there's one hatch we need to go in that I've keep missing. Okay, that's back to her. Must be that light parking one. We can open. Oh, it's a trap. Required ability rank. Bomb disposal skill. I need to figure out that. <clears throat> figure out what that is. I think that's worth leveling up. Again, though, it's so early in the game, I don't even know if we're going to get henchmen at some point. Maybe I can get them to do some of that. Why didn't I search that? Various devices. Nothing found. Stack of equipment. Nothing found. Okay. Freight transport parking. I don't think that's it. What's this? That's generator. Freight transports. That's probably freight transport. Main alley. Man, am I this dense? Where is the one I'm looking for? I think this is it, right? No, that's the loading dock. Have I been to the loading dock? <coughs> Do, 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 do. 
I've already been here. Damn it! Alright, so it's got to be the last one. <clears throat> There's one I haven't picked. It's somewhere. Ah, oh, which one is it? That's the main entrance. It's, have I been to the main entrance? I think when we solve this, that'll be the, the stop. I'm in there. I've got to get on with my life. This game has sucked me in. Can't rest until I figure this level out. There we go. I think this is it. Why are we seeing all these entries of this diary of Monty Collingwood? Yeah, there we go. Yay! Okay, save. Stealth mode. Security key card. This key card is needed to control the turrets. Okay, that's, I believe. Of course, it didn't work so well for him, did it? How do we actually use the card? Assuming I don't just walk over. Oh, I just save this back. Save. There is that. So you're gonna wake it up to, act, to do the scan. Oh, weird. Is it not gonna activate? Maybe since I got the key card, it doesn't. It's not gonna shoot me now. What does that just seem? Okay, I guess it's. I guess we're okay now. There's a control panel in there. Let's see if we can use that. Yeah, they don't seem to be doing anything. Pretty cool that I got the scan of them. I might get some XP that way, too. Okay, now we have the card. Password used. Examine the panel. The chairs are overturned and the walls are riddled with bullet holes. The control panel is covered in blood. And they got the correct version of ints with the apostrophe. Careful examination shows that the panel is separated into three blocks. Emergency indicators, security monitors, and the parking lot turrets control the board. Alright, check the condition of the turrets. The turrets are in paranoid mode. They will fire on anything that moves. The system. Turning back off and on again. You hear an unpleasant sound and then another one. From now on, the parking lot security system will recognize Cronus employees as friendlies. Protection seems to be in default mode. Yeah, the alarm has been raised on all Nashville levels. Non-critical systems have been switched to sleep mode. They're on your side. The surveillance system is failing. A few displays show the parking lot. Okay, I, guess, I guess we're... Okay. So we should just be able to go back to uh, Morgan. What would happen if she died? Would that mean we'd have to just be stuck? Wait, I see a pile of stones. Is that the same one I looked at earlier? Yeah, locked. Search. You're locked. Oh, is this going to damage my crowbar? Ah, 
destroyed my destroyed my thing, but I got a shotgun though. Of course, I don't think I've got any points put in shotguns. It sucks I lost my crowbar. Okay, I should be able to tell her that we're all good. My abilities. Find a car and drive away from here as you suggest. Wait a minute, what? Find a car. Huh? Quest completed. What am I? I thought she was gonna fix the truck. Where is she going? Take care of yourself. He won't leave you. What? Did I miss something? Uh, what am I supposed to be doing now? You gained access to the turrets? You need to get inside, contact the team. Oh, I guess we're not done here. Okay. Well, how do I get inside then? Yeah. I don't need to be. There's an orange wing employee. Yeah, all kinds of got another lockpick. That's good. Strange pile of rocks. Can't turn. Can't pass that up. I can't get over. Locked. You probably should change that to something like. Oh, I didn't destroy my crowbar. I just destroyed the lock. Okay, that makes sense. That makes more sense. About the same, man. It takes a. It did take a lot of force to break a crowbar. How do I actually get inside the base then? Where is the base? I think this is it, right? Yeah, that's gotta be it. Hoppity hippity. Employees to search. These are some weird looking guns. I'm probably getting close to my encumbrance max. Just picking up everything. Yeah, here we go. Attention! The lockdown mode is activated. The door is blocked. Talk to the employee on the entry point two. transition. Not quite done. Finding employee. There's another key. Okay. Can I get in there? Apparently barricaded from the other side. See what my encumbrance is looking like these days. Well, I guess I still got plenty of uh, ventilation access. Maybe that's the way in. Fan blades are turning sleepily behind the vent grid. Uh, I can't blow it up. <laughs> it's just like, shoot it! Can't you shoot it? And why not? Okay. Oh, no, I can't. Did I get something to. Did I get a generator or something? Something? Uh, 
Did I get a key or a card or I don't think there's anything with that yet. Maybe I have to use the walkie again. Maybe I had to learn some information to be able to tell her the right thing. Or maybe I just sort of botched the whole game because I didn't mean to begin with. Wouldn't that suck? Well, that's... Can't do that. Uh, guard post? Oh, I guess I haven't been in here yet. That solves that. Some juicy ammunition. Man, I get a ton of these stupid tasers. They'll be the first things they strip. Okay, so what does the lockpick do for me? Doesn't seem to cut down on anything, but uh, just gives me extra points. So I guess if I don't need to use it, I should just use my hand. Reason, hand-to-hand -hand brass knuckles. Another comic. Allows to perform upgrade of knuckles or combat guard. Another one of these manuals. It's driving me crazy that there's no explanation about how to use these. The only thing I can figure is something to do with the crafting system. Maybe you just have to have those in the inventory, or maybe it. You, if you don't have it in the inventory, maybe. <coughs> Can't craft it. Door is creaking open. Alright, did that do it? it? Said door is creaking open. Nashville's main elevator doors open with a drawn out screech. A harsh smell comes from the dim, dirty compartment. The smell reminds you of a quartz lamp. As you step onto the elevator platform, you notice a woman in silver wing uniform. She's standing in the corner facing the wall, head down. That's mildly creepy. Grab her shoulder and turn her around. Yes, because I've never seen a horror movie ever. Leave her be. Wait. Examine her more closely, yes. You examine the chevron on her jacket sleeve. Apparently, she's one of those responsible for the Nashville site excavation. Your eyes are drawn to her hands where dozens of tiny lights are moving under her skin with a faint twinkle. That's not good. Leave her be. Grab her shoulder. Uh, oh, I know this is the stupid thing to do, but... Uh. The stranger makes no reaction. Even as you grab her shoulder and turn her around, she looks weird. Her face is completely slack, as though she were under the influence of a powerful anesthetic. Her eyes are wide open, though. Bright white rings glow around her irises. In other words, she looks exactly like somebody staring at a phone all day. There's a thud. Something heavy falls down behind your back, making the platform shudder. This is getting, <laughs> getting pretty, pretty creepy. You reflexively jump aside. I'm just in time. Yeah. A body lands where you were standing a moment ago with an unpleasant crunch. And then another one right next to it. People begin to fall onto the elevator platform from the darkness of the shaft above. Yeah, now we're talking. The elevator platform is shaking. A speaker on the wall comes alive. Caution, overload. <coughs> Please vacate the platform. Caution, overload. Please vac... The strained overhead cable snaps with a blaring twang. You fail to leap from the platform in time. It plummets, whatever remains of its emergency braking mechanism screeching unbearably. Ooh. Deafness. <coughs> Muscle survival. Well, 
It seems like the one for survival takes the most points. I'm gonna try that. You lay down on the elevator floor to soften the blow as much as possible. Is that what you're supposed to do? The elevator car comes to a sudden halt as it crashes into something soft with a loud splash. Faint emergency lights illuminate a heap of torn limbs and crushed torsos smeared on the floor. The smell of blood is thick in the air. I don't think they make that scent. <laughs> Glade plug it. <laughs> smell of blood. <laughs> you stagger to your feet. The elevator door opens onto a dark corridor. You have arrived at your destination. Welcome to Nashville, Tennessee. I wish you'd have gotten to this part early, man. This is good. Okay, I don't want this interview to last like a 10 hours. No, I was joking though about maybe doing a, <laughs> like a marathon. <laughs> See if I could stretch out to like 16 hours or something. But anyway, I think I've played enough to say, yeah, this is definitely, uh, it's definitely caught my attention. It's kind of a slow burn. You know, they, they spent a lot of time kind of building things up and you know, you had to get through the tutorial and all that. Uh, you got to adjust to the style of it. You know, just kind of a, what I'd call more of a writerly or readerly style game you kind of have to like uh, not necessarily uh, you know if you, if you like reading novels <laughs> or audiobooks you know if you just hate that you probably wouldn't like the game uh, but if you like it or you're okay with it I think you can get past it you know the story itself is, is, is good obviously you know with that kind of source material it'd be kind of hard to go uh, to go wrong um, it's still pretty early you know, obviously, I don't know if there's more combat later in the game, you know, if those ratios pick up or, or whatever the, the case could be. The combats that I have, the battles that I've played through so far have been fun. You know, fairly straightforward. I'm not I'm not playing it on the hardest level. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how complicated the battles get as we go along here. The gameplay mechanics, I think, are great. You know, it's, it's fun to be thinking. I like, kind of like the way they set this up where you have the the tiers that you're getting to, so you have stuff to look forward to. It doesn't automatically give you boosts, right? You, I guess you could probably put you know two or three more points in heavy weapons here. It's not going to do anything as far as I can tell. Uh, but I actually kind of like this. I like to have those sort of bigger rewards uh, all at once, sort of a big plateau system, rather than just sort of gradual pew, uh, puny. <laughs> well, I'm doing like a fraction more of damage now than I was. You know, forget that. I like the, the tiers or the, the plateaus, so I'm fine with that. Uh, it seems like there's at least as much depth here as you would get with the, the Wasteland games, the Fallout games, just in terms of all these perks and traits and abilities. You know, it's kind of all here. Uh, I think it's kind of clever. I know other games have done this too, but I always like the when they tie things together nicely. So like when these skills are tied to certain weapons and then you get these abilities here. Actually, I don't think these things have cooldowns. I don't know if they've got that mechanic in here. You know, the stealth had a cooldown on it. Ability cooldown timer. So there's some things have cooldowns. You know, with uh, my game system, I'm thinking I have uh, abilities that all have uh, different cooldowns on it. This is another way to... Uh, so you don't want them using the same powerful ability every round, but I guess... You know, this game obviously shows you can do things with uh, uh, fatigue or just limiting you, like with the ammunition. You know, so you're not just just don't give them enough enough ammo <laughs> where they can always be doing the the gotcha or whatever the case may be. And also work around for that, I suppose. It looks like there's still a few things that uh, I'm unclear on. I, I don't quite understand this fatigue system, how to get rid of it. You know, if it is a matter of just having to find pills all the time, or just rarely finding a bed, I guess that just means you really have to be uh, reluctant to use those abilities, including like lockpicks. <laughs> it looks like it does have some penalties for it, so I'm not sure how I feel about that system. Uh, you know, I don't know what to make of that. Now, other elements, you know, the voice acting is good. Uh, the you know, I think I feel like I've already said enough about the writing. 
the graphics, everything looks great to me. You know, this is every game kind of has a point where I just say that's just, that's that's fine. <laughs> you know, the level of detail, the uh, the effects and things. I don't need anything better looking than this, to be honest. I could play games that look like this the rest of my life, be totally satisfied. I know other people might want more latest Nvidia, whatever crap, <laughs> HDR. I don't know what, what they even call it anymore. Don't care. Uh, you know, as long as the game is at this level, I'm fine with it. Uh, the music, you know, it's just kind of that ambiance, the sort of vaguely scary, sinister, you know, electronic stuff. A little bit of more upbeat stuff, I guess, at certain points. But you know, it's fine. It doesn't really stand out. It's obviously, not supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be background mood setting type stuff. Not sort of stuff you're thumping, you're tapping your uh, <laughs> foot to. Now I gotta say that's one thing I thought was clever about Wasteland uh, two and three, or at least three. I have to go back and play two again. But you know, Fargo, you know, they did some uh, some pretty innovative stuff, some unusual, unexpected stuff with the music in that game. I thought was was cool. You know, of course, they got the budget to do it. Here's fun. But so there we go. I mean, I'm definitely going to continue playing this. Definitely, uh, it's got me. Uh, by the short hairs, shall we say. It's all I can do not to just keep playing at this point. I want to get this video done, get something out. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video as I get a little closer to the end of this. But man, you know, I like to leave a game. I kind of like to leave a review on a high note. You know, I don't want to just get bored, you know, just record until I'm bored. I like to uh, stop while I'm feeling like, oh, can't stop here. Need to see next level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you think about that, but uh, I think that's a good spot to, uh, to leave. So anyway, I'm going to stop it here. I definitely would pick this game up. It's uh, on sale right now. Let me see if I can get rid of this background music. Let me save it here. I'll tell you how much it costs. I'm kind of getting tired of that alarm sound in the background. Let's go back to the menu. <laughs> okay. Okay, so right now it's on sale. It's 50% off. Yeah, that's much. I like this song. Uh, so it's on special promotion ends July 17th. It's only 15 bucks. So it's 50% off. That's on Steam. On GOG, it's still $30. So this is. I don't know what it's going to. I don't know when you're going to get around to watching this. I oh, can actually buy the soundtrack separately. That's cool. 15 bucks. I mean, don't even. Don't even hesitate. Just go pick this up. I guarantee it's worth 15 bucks. And you're going to have a good time. And I just feel like I've barely scratched the surface on this thing. So anyway, I'll stop it here. I'll go pick it up in case. Sci-fi post-apocalyptic. Great game. A little slow start. <laughs> a little slow burn. <laughs> uh, but it definitely it overcomes that. Or I overcame that. However you want to look at it. And I'm really getting into it. Ah, good stuff. Anyway. Uh, let me know what you think. If you do get this game, sound off in the comments. If you played it, you have a different take. Stuff I missed, you want other people to know about? Hey, that's what the comments are for. Love to read those, love to hear from you. So, anyway, stop it here. See you next time. And that's all for this week's episode. Got a bunch of stuff coming up, a lot of interviews. And it should be very, very active. I think you'll see more match chats than usual next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. I think the next one I'm wanting to say is George MacDonald. So you can look at look him up if you want to, uh, <laughs> me to pass on any questions. Then I'll be uh, talking, hopefully, to Evan Robinson uh, the following week. So a lot of great stuff, a lot of uh, stuff about SSI. Uh, I think there's some of those guys have been involved in some EA, early electronic art stuff. But, you know, it'll be some uh, fun times, and I always like to ask them questions that you guys send in. So please do that. Take a look at the... Uh, their portfolios on uh, Moby Games. And also, I think I might have mentioned this a couple times in the video, but just in case I didn't, if you act before July 17th, okay, you can get this game we looked at encased. It's uh, on Steam. It's 50% off. I don't think you can go wrong with that. So even if you don't want to play the game right away, you got a big queue. You know, I think this is one of those times when you want to go ahead and buy the game, get it on, into your Steam library. And, uh, you know, just when you have some free time, you'll want to check this game out. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that sale is on GOG, at least not that I was able to find. So this might be a Steam, Steam only sale, but July 17th, you know, it'll be here before you know it. So you probably want to grab that. 
Uh, I think this is a great game. De definitely worth it at 50% off. I mean, no question. All right. Uh, oh, forgot this. Uh, how could I forget? Uh, I want to thank you. Thank you all very, 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 very much for supporting this show, keeping Matt Chat alive. I think we're going to make it to 500. <laughs> I'm getting optimistic. I mean, it's episode 489. You know, what, what do we got? Like 11 episodes left to go? You know, I couldn't have done that without you guys supporting me on Patreon, sharing the links, posting about it on Twitter, the, the retweeting, the <laughs> uh, just being uh, fun on the Discord channel. I mean, it's, it's really been great, guys. I really want to thank you all again uh, so much for your support. No way could have, I could have done this. I wouldn't have done this, frankly, without, you know, people like you stepping up to the plate. Uh, and supporting the show. You know, if you like uh, Matt Chat, you want to help me get to 500, it's not too late. Uh, you can jump on that uh, link at the bottom to the Patreon page. Uh, one buck, that's all I ask, a buck a month, basically. <laughs> uh, keep the show going. You can join the Discord channel. And, of course, you got some extra cash. Maybe you're one of those, what they call them, uh, crypto millionaires. You know, I got a few of those. Hey, maybe you could chip in $2. <laughs> You know, even five dollars. You know, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. You know, but but any kind of support you can offer the show, I appreciate it and thank you. All right, what about that news from the Met Cave? Oh, Matt Workula, 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 Matt Workula. Oh, Matt, 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 what do you got for me today? He's got something pretty cool, actually. It's a book called The Great Tales Never End, Essays in Memory of Christo Christopher Tolkien. So not <laughs> J.R.R., but his son Christopher. Now, this is a collection of essays, family stories, and archival documents all about Christopher Tolkien's contributions to the Tolkien Legendarium. Did I say that word? You know, I think this book is great because I think Christopher doesn't get enough credit. You know, he's done a lot of stuff. He's a really... A, you know, arguably, I guess you could read this book to find out more, but you know, he's had a big impact. Yeah, you know, I, uh, <laughs> uh, and you know, this this book is a good example of that kind of a a way to honor that work. Let's see, color reproductions of Tolkien's manuscripts, J.R.R. Tolkien's manuscripts, maps, drawings, and letters, as well as photographs of Christopher Tolkien and extracts from his works. Many of these documents have never been seen before. Uh, now, this book's available for pre-order, but unfortunately, it looks like, at the moment anyway, it's only in hardcover. It's a hefty uh, $65, uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of pricey, but, you know, if you're a completist, completionist, <laughs> you definitely want to pick this up. Uh, if you do, let me know what you think of it. Love to hear from you about it. Anyway, thank you to Matt for that. And then Tired Gaming Dad, you know, one of the uh, folks you'll meet if you ever go to the Discord channel for the show. Had a bunch of news, you know. I said, "Hey, you guys got any news for the Matt Cave segment? Matt, <laughs> Matt Chat news? <laughs> like, boom, boom. He's got like three things. Boom, boom, boom. And it's all good stuff. Uh, the first is a game called Alaloth, 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 A L A L O T H, Champions of the Four Kingdoms. It's a skill-driven ARPG game, action RPG, uh, inspired by such classics as Baldur's Gate and Pillars of Eternity." Set in a rich fantasy world resembling the darkest period of the Middle Ages, the game offers fast-paced action with a deep narrative. So hard to have both. I guess we'll see how they go. It's uh, out, in, like, out in EA, he says, and the dev team is really working hard with new patches almost daily. Uh, but that's just the first item. He also uh, wrote in about Orbody Binder's Tale. Now, do you have a, an old NES sitting around? I bet you probably do. <laughs> well, you can actually get a cartridge, a brand new game on cartridge for that system. It's called uh, Ore Body. I think that's how you say that. A linear platform shooter for the NES that takes place on the alien world of Ore Body. Yeah, so check that out. Uh, and then he also, uh, just to have a three, <laughs> three items, <laughs> uh, the new ARC line, ARC line, started a dev blog on Reddit. This is a story-rich, party-based RPG set in a world of techno-punk and magic. So think Arcanum. Uh, let's see what else he's got here about this. You build a reputation for yourself, make foes and allies, get involved in a massive conspiracy, and op ultimately decide the fate of this land. Now, I was looking at this artwork. It kind of reminds me not just of Arcanum, 
kind of the obvious thing, but also uh, you ever play a game called Siberia? There's a couple of those uh, point-and-click adventure games. I hardly ever hear anybody mention those anymore. If you haven't played them, though, I think they're just really, really good. Uh, Siberia, I think it's spelled with a Y. I used to have them up here somewhere. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, it's just something I... A little bonus I'll throw out there for you. If you haven't played Siberia, check that out. But uh, this new arc line looks really good, too, so stay tuned. And then our good friend uh, Miko, yes, he wrote in, too, got not to be outdone. He's got a game called Eldorm, a crowdfunded RPG that was pretty much abandoned in 2019. Or it seemed that way, I guess, but that was, uh, uh, that was turned out to be false. <laughs> it was not abandoned. Matter of fact, they've been chugging along back from the dead and even has a demo available now on Steam. Now this one, I, this is probably one I'm going to want to sink my uh, rat teeth into when this comes out. It looks like, really looks like my kind of game. I'm really kind of pumped about this. It looks like it's actually, uh, you know, I, it's kind of hard to tell. I haven't done a lot of research on this, but it looks like this will be a real treat uh, for people that not only like the uh, Grimrock series, but want something a little more tactical uh, when it comes to combat. So we'll stay tuned. It looks really good uh, and promising. All right, I think that'll do it for the news. What about the quotes? Well, I was looking for quotes, of course, from Roadside Picnic. A very heady, uh, you know, I think they call it a mini novel. You know, it's really good. You should read it if you haven't read it. I've read it, but it's been enough, been long enough ago. I don't even remember too much of it. I did take a course called the uh, like Great Classics of Science Fiction, something like that, on, on Wondrium. They talked a lot about this being influential. Uh, there's another one called Canticle of Leibowitz. Don't ask me how to spell Leibowitz, <laughs> but, you know, if you're looking for something to read this summer, uh, read Roadside Picnic and Canticle for, for Leibowitz. You know, both of those are really good, in my opinion, and the professor, of course, from that series. But anyway, here's the quote. This will give you a little hint of uh, what's to come if you do pick up Roadside Picnic. And this is by Arkady, Arkady, actually, Arkady Strugatsky, or it's probably Strugatsky. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? The uh, quote goes something like this, and I'm going to say this in the, read this in the original Russian. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, quote goes something like this. This is a good quote. We don't notice things change. We know that things change. We've been told since childhood that things change. We've witnessed things change ourselves many a time, and yet we're still utterly incapable, incapable of noticing the moment that change comes. Or we search for change in all the wrong places. Hmm. So ponder on that and see you guys next time. Do you want the applause now or will it wait?